Simba has just squashed himself underneath the coffee table. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how he did this. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. 9.45 a.m. Splash has been at Boo's door. Simba has been at Boo's door. And Stella has jumped on my bed a few times. Here comes Stella down the hall. Look at this. Look at this. All three cats near Boo's door. Where's Boo? Where's Boo? Oh, there's Boo. Boo's right by his door. And there goes Stella. And there goes Boo. Hello, Boo. Good morning, Boo. Good morning, Stella. You see Boo? You guys gonna get along? I'm going to stand by Boo's door to see if Stella follows me. Yep, Stella just followed me and she's rubbing up against my legs. I'm going to go stand here. I'm going to stand right by Boo's gate. Look at this. And Stella rubbed up against my legs. I am right by Boo's gate. Oh, so Stella looked through the gate and Boo backed away. Did you hear him back away? Here's Simba. It looks like Boo's intimidated by Stella. 11.55 a.m. I think Stella likes snow. Either that or cold weather because since we've had snow outside, she spends a lot of time looking out the back door. It's about 12.20 p.m. right now. It is 14 degrees out. I'm so tired of this cold weather. I just gave Hydrox some food and water, and look what happened to the table. I just realized that. Look, the leg is broken. What? It looks like it just needed to be screwed back in, but eventually that'll be fixed. There's Hydrox. He just came out of the cat shelter. He's just sitting there hanging out. He's going to eat once I go inside. Now I can read the thermometer from here, the thermometer that's on the side of his house, and that thermometer says it's about 38 degrees there. So 38 degrees is a lot better than 14 degrees, my gosh. So it looks like that little solar room is helping to uh, provide some heat over there. And um, I'm really curious to see how warm the inside of that shelter gets because the inside has like insulation and the uh, heated pet pad and stuff like that. So, all right, I'm gonna go in and let Hydrox eat his food. Okay, I just came inside and there goes Hydrox right over to the food. I hope he eats it. I put water in his wet food to make sure that he gets his liquids. He's getting the good food. He's getting the nature's variety. Uh, pride by instinct, champs, chicken formula. That leg still looks wobbly on that table. It is 1.37 p.m. I was sitting on the couch with Boo. He was sleeping next to me and I was editing a video. And I heard Simba jump the gate in the kitchen and come upstairs. And here's Simba right now. So what Simba did was he jumped the gate, came upstairs, and then he went into Boo's room. And he looked all around Boo's room and he smelled Boo's room and I watched it on one of the security cameras as I was sitting here because I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to get off the couch with Boo sitting next to me. So when Simba was done smelling Boo's room, he walked across the living room and jumped onto the cat tower. The minute Boo saw Simba, Boo got off the couch. So he jumped down and uh, he's been watching Simba. And then I went in the other room and got this camera. I did not have any cameras with me. And um, right now he's just hanging out here, which I'm fine with. Like if they're hanging out in the same room and no one's bothering each other, I'm okay with that. So 
Right, Boo? I mean, right now, there was some tension at first, but right now it seems to be okay. I mean, I don't know. It could change in any minute. Okay, Boo? You're gonna be a good boy. You're gonna be a good boy. It's okay. You'll be a good boy. Simba's your buddy. Remember, you and Simba are buddies. You guys are buddies. Uh, be nice. You be nice. You be gentle. Gentle. You be gentle. Okay. I'm gonna go in your room. Simba has just squashed himself underneath the coffee table. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how he did this. That is a four inch clearance. So now I know that Simba can get himself down into a four inch clearance. I brought this collapsible pet crate into the house the other day. I needed to clean out my garage, make room to put a car in it. And uh, this was in the garage. This was originally outside in the patio with Boo months ago. Um, but I brought it inside and I put it downstairs in like a storage area. And I just took it out and right now it's in the living room. And I put it together and Simba was inside of it. And I wanted to get him closed in there and then have Boo come out and interact with him. But that wasn't going to happen. And right now, Stella's up here and Simba's up here. They're both up here with this collapsible pet crate. Now, if I could get Boo into it, that would be awesome. I could put Boo in here and then just see what they do. But I don't think Boo would be happy going in there. I don't know how I would get him in there. And uh, right now, I'm just going to... I'm just going to leave it here and see if either of them go in it or, or what. You know, let them get used to it just being here. 2.25 p.m. Simba is exploring the collapsible pet crate. There's probably some catnip remaining in there from one that was outside, but it seems that Simba has decided to lay down in that like right section. See that section like right there? He's laying down in there right now. The birds have been having a feast on leftover cat food. For some reason they hear me like take out the camera and then they all fly away. It is 4.53 p.m. I am just about to go outside and give Hydrox some food. He's going to get half a can of this Perfect Bistro Turducken. I had a few extra cans from their Christmas dinner. He's also getting some fresh, warm water. I just gave Hydrox his food and his water, and then I guess he heard me, like, crunching around on the snow because he just crawled out of the shelter. He just crawled out of the vestibule. Are you going to eat, Hydrox? He must be really hungry. You think he's going to eat out of the can? Okay, Hydrox, I'll go inside. I'll go inside. I know you're hungry, okay? I know you're hungry. I'm going to go inside, okay? It is seven degrees out. This is too cold. The cats never open day 25 on their advent calendar, so they are going to get their treat today. Today's New Year's Eve. And um, I want to get all the cat stuff filmed and out of the way um, early today. So, so let's see what the cats got. I moved the collapsible crate and Stella has decided she wants to go lay down inside of it. It's kind of to the right of the Christmas tree. Stella's checking it out. To me, it always looks like a m little mini... Winnebago for cats. It's like a little camper for cats. Simba's like ready to go. You ready, Simba? Simba, you ready? What's in the bag? What's in the bag, Simba? Check it out. What is it? What's in the bag? Okay, guys. What do we got? Come on. Who's going to open this? Stella, are you going to open this? You guys going to open the bag? 
Okay, let's go. Let's see. What's in here? What's in the bag? What'd you get? What'd you get, guys? Look. They're tinsel fish. They're toys. Look at the toys. You guys don't want the toys? Look how cute. Are you going to tell me these cats have so many toys they have absolutely no interest? It could be that these are not catnip toys. Simba has decided to choose one. Is he going to play with it? Yes? No? You don't like them? You don't like the toys? Here, you want a toy to play with? You don't like it? Boo will like it because it has feathers. Boo, you want to play with the toy? There's your toy. Are you going to like the toy? Boo should like it because it has feathers on it. You going to play with the feathers? Oops, I got it now. I was going to play with that, boo. I was going to play with that, but you can't hit my hand. Oops, I showed up. Simba wants to play. Boo wants to play. Gentle, we play gentle.
kind of just ignoring each other, which is good. At least Boo likes his new toy. The other cats could care less. Stella has decided she wants to play with the white one. The cats have not opened any of their Christmas presents. I was waiting to get back from Christmas myself before they opened their presents and then things got hectic for a few days and now they are finally going to open their Christmas presents. Right Simba? You guys ready to open your presents? I have no idea what any of these presents are. These presents are from Santa. Okay let's open Let's open the first present. Come on guys, who's gonna open the present? Who's gonna open the first present? You gonna open it, Stella? Anybody gonna open this? You're both gonna open it together? That would be nice. Let me see you both open it together. No. What'd you get, Simba? Open it. Open it, what'd you get? You don't want to open it. I'll open it. You gonna open it? I'll open it. What you guys get? They got a wand toy. Ooh, they got an extra wand toy. They love these wand toys, right Simba? Okay, put that aside. Okay, for some reason, neither of them want to open their presents today. I have no idea why. There goes Simba. He's walking right by it. Okay, let's see what they got. They got a grumpy cat wand toy. Isn't that cute with the little grumpy cat on it? Oh, now Simba's interested in, like, the other end of the stick. Here's another present for them. I don't know why they don't want to open them, but I will. They got another Grumpy Cat wand toy. There's Grumpy Cat. Let's see if Simba's more interested in the wrapping paper. No. Here's another present. It's another Grumpy Cat wand toy. So now there's three Grumpy Cat wand toys. One for Boo, Simba, and Splash. And then there's this one for Stella, because Stella likes these kind of wormy toys. Okay, here we have their next present. I don't know what's the matter with them. I don't know why they don't want to open their presents. It's not like them. They're acting strange. What do we have here? We have meaty sticks. Chicken meaty sticks. And what do we have here? We have more meaty sticks. What's this? What do you guys think this is? I think it's hard to open. I 
they have their favorite treats, the Bench and Field Holistic Natural Feline Treats. Very cool. Did you guys see the wrapping paper? Look, it's all cats. Isn't that cute? We have more toys. We have a strawberry and a banana. Now somewhere in this house, these cats have like three or four chocolate covered strawberry toys from last Valentine's Day and I have absolutely no idea where they are. What's this? Oh, I think I know what it might be. Oh no, I'm wrong. It is. Newman's own premium cat food, it says. The ingredients are organic turkey, sufficient water for processing, organic chicken, poultry liver, organic chicken broth, ocean whitefish, organic brown rice, oat bran, tricalcium phosphate, guar gum, flaxseed, potassium chloride, dried kelp. Then we go into all kinds of minerals and vitamins, and that's it. This is turkey formula made with organic turkey. They should like that. Or Hydrox should like that. I think this is a present for Hydrox. What do we have here? We have another set of catnip toys. Another strawberry and another banana. Now they have plenty. This is Newman's own turkey and vegetable formula. I wonder how this one is different than the turkey formula. This is organic turkey, water sufficient for processing, organic chicken, poultry liver, organic chicken broth, Organic brown rice. Oh, this has sweet potatoes, spinach, carrots. I like this one better. Tricalcium phosphate, oat bran, guar gum, flaxseed, potassium chloride, dried kelp, and then we go into minerals and vitamins. So, Hydrox will enjoy eating this. This is a Newman's own chicken and salmon formula. So what's in this? This is organic chicken, sufficient water for processing, poultry liver, salmon, ocean whitefish, organic brown rice, oat bran, tricalcium phosphate, flaxseed guar gum, potassium chloride, dried kelp, and then minerals and vitamins. If you notice, they all pretty much have the same ingredients. Um, this one has some additional salmon in it, and it doesn't have the vegetables, but it seems that their formula is pretty standard. Stella is watching from about eight feet away, and um, I saw Splash walking around. I don't know where he is right now. But... They have another can of turkey and vegetable formula, Newman's Own Premium Cat Food. And then this is the last present. What's in here? What do we have? We have another can of Newman's own premium cat food. This is the chicken and salmon formula. So these cats got toys, they got treats, they got food, they got everything cats can need. They need to be nice. I don't mind if they play together as long as they play nice. And no one jumps on top of the other one. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It is 10 a.m. Good morning, Boo. Boo had free roam last night and he pretty much slept on top of the cat tower in the front window all night.
My boat. I heard some cats at the gate this morning. There's Simba right here and then down the steps. Can you see Stella and then splashes on the bottom? They're probably hungry because it's 10 o'clock, but last night they had meaty sticks. Mm, look at this. Look at this. Boo's right here. Stella's right there. Simba's right there. It looks like they're learning to tolerate each other. The cats are having a New Year's Day treat. They are having Perfect Bistro Grammy's Pot Pie. This is grain free. It says it is minced. The ingredients are deboned chicken, chicken broth, chicken liver, deboned duck, peas, dried egg product, natural flavor, dried potatoes, sweet potato, carrots, cranberries, organic alfalfa, calcium carbonate, salt, potassium chloride, carrageenan, cassia gum, guar gum powdered cellulose, sodium phosphate, salmon oil, and then it goes into minerals and um, vitamins. And then it has thyme, sage, rosemary, and yucca shitagira extract. So um, it does have a few thickeners in it, but I like the fact uh, that there are no byproducts and um, it's clean protein. And there's also potatoes, sweet potato, carrots, cranberries, and alfalfa. And I'm sorry that this is not focusing on the ingredients. I don't know why. I've tried several times to get it to focus and it won't focus. So this is their breakfast today. Boo is so excited to eat canned food. Like, I really think canned food is his favorite. But oh well, Boo, we gotta eat a little bit healthier than that. But anyway, this is good canned food. You hungry, Boo? Want some food? He's going to eat it on my lap. No, you're not eating it here. I'm trying to get him to make, like, these meowing noises he was making. It was so funny. Okay, boo. He should really like that. Today they're getting half can each because they did not have any other dry food to go with it. The other day I gave them a quarter of a can each because they also had some dry food earlier that day. I wish I had a camera on what just happened. So the wheatgrass is looking like really gnarly. It's on its way out within the next day or so. And um, the cats were downstairs on the bottom of the steps. So I put the wheatgrass here up on the landing and Simba and Stella just like sprinted up the stairs for the wheatgrass. It was so funny. Okay, so I left the wheatgrass here as I brought the canned cat food downstairs. Then I heard all this noise going on up here. I said, well, what the heck's going on? So I just came up and look, there's no cat grass here. It seems that Simba has decided to pick up the cat grass, take it up a step, and dump it in the kitchen. And then he came straight up to the top of this cat tower. I'm starting to wonder if I should get another one of these cat towers for the front window. I do not want anything taller than this size for the front window because it will just look absolutely ridiculous uh, when people drive by. I have really wide windows here and I really don't want to spoil the view from inside their room by having to look through a cat tower and I also don't want it to look like there's a giant cat tower in the window from outside. So these are below the windowsill, so they could like sit upright in this and see out, but they don't really use it much. This one they use all the time, like Boo's on this all night or Simba. There's always a cat in this one. So I'm thinking maybe I should get another one of these. Now I got this one at Marshall's. I think I got this one at Marshall's, but I've seen this exact one also at like Home Goods. Or TJ Maxx, you know, all three of those stores are owned by the same company, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and Home Goods. They all have the same owner, so a lot of times they all have the same products in them. So I have seen this. I think I got it for like $39.99. And I'm thinking maybe replacing the smaller one with one of these. It's only like a foot taller, but they love this one so much. And again, I'm not going any higher than that in height because from outside, 
you really can't see that there's a cat tower at all. You just see like a cat. Unless I replace uh, these cat towers with like a piece of human furniture that the cats can lay on top of like what's in Boo's room where there's, um, there's uh, shelves near the window. Let's say do something like that here, which is, I would rather do. What are you looking at, Simba? What do you see, a bird? So here's the food for uh, Stella, Splash, and Simba. It's Grammy's pot pie, and I wish I could tell you how good this smells. Like, it smells like roast chicken. If you've ever walked into Boston Market where they do rotisserie chicken, that's what this reminds me of. It has just a really savory roast chicken aroma. It smells really good. I mean, and the other, that turducken um, from Perfect Bistro, that smelled amazing also. Splash is ready to eat. You ready to eat, Splash? Come on. You wanna eat? Let's eat. Let's eat. See, Stella rubs up against me. Splash rubs up against Stella. <laughs> He's so funny. I'm the one feeding you, Splash, not your mommy. I am. He's contemplating rubbing up against me today. Splash, if you rub up against me, you guys could eat immediately. Okay, Splash, rub up against me, and then you guys eat immediately. Wow, Stella just rubbed up against me, like standing on her hind legs. Oh, look at that. Oh, I, I, I forget, I can't say anything. I can't talk when Splash wants to interact. Okay, guys, ready? There's your food. Have a good boy, Splash. Have a good boy, Splash. Eat your food, Splash. Eat your food. 11.45 a.m. It's about 14 degrees out, maybe 12 degrees out, and there's Hydrox hanging out in the sun. He looks like a happy boy. I just gave him half a can of the turducken along with some fresh water. There's Stella watching me from the door. The thermometer? on the side of the cat shelter is over 50 degrees. It's almost, actually it's 58 degrees. So inside this little solarium for cats, it is 58 degrees versus 12 degrees. And that's because the sun is out today. What I would like to do is put some rocks or bricks in there along the outside of that cat house because the rocks or bricks would actually absorb the heat and um, then they would hold the heat through part of the night also and keep some of the heat in there longer. And there's Hydrox, he just went to eat his food. And there's the food for the downstairs cats. They're not happy with it. It looks like they tasted it, but they don't really want it. Stella's drinking some water. I just refilled that water dispenser today. And I also gave them fresh water in their bowl. I give them fresh water every day. And I usually refill that dispenser, you know, like once a week. But I do uh, throw out the water that's in it on a daily basis. Like the water that's in the reservoir in the bottom, I empty that out. 
and then it refills from the uh, dispenser area. 1.22 p.m. Stella is sleeping on top of the cat tower in the front window. Simba is taking a nap in the collapsible pet carrier. Boo just came out of his room and Stella hissed at him. Now there's growling involved. Stella's growling. Come here, Boo. Want some treats? I just gave Boo some treats. Stella and Simba are now walking around the Christmas tree. Uh-oh. Simba just walked up to Boo. I don't want him... I don't want them to, like, freak each other out, you know? I don't want Simba to steal his treats. Okay. I gave Boo some treats and I gave Simba some treats. Okay, Boo. Okay, Boo. You don't hit my hand. I give you treats. There's some treats for you. That's it, no more. I don't know where Stella went. No more treats, Boo. That's it. You had your treats. Okay? Oh. No more treats. You just had a whole bunch of treats. He's a bit nervous with Simba around here. It's 3.22 p.m. right now. There's Stella. Stella's actually checking out the collapsible pet crate. Now if we could sit here like good cats for a while, that would be nice, right, Boo? Be a good boy. He's smelling where I gave Simba and Stella their treats. Hello, Boo. You being a good boy? Okay, it has officially been five minutes. The cats have been in the same room for five minutes now. I don't know where Stella is, but right now it's Boo right here and Simba right here. And I've been giving them treats, but they're done. They've had more treats than they should have had. Simba's trying to find that treat. He just knocked the treat out. Here, Boo. Simba just found the treat. I didn't want Boo to go there and eat it. And there'd be a fight. They need to be nice. I don't mind if they play together as long as they play nice. And no one jumps on top of the other one. Okay, no jumping. No jumping.
Okay. I feel like I have to just sit here and watch them and supervise them. It's been eight minutes. Ideally, what I would like to do is let them just spend time with each other like this each day, a little bit more time each day. So, like, if they could do 15 minutes today, I think that would be good. Maybe, you know, then, like, 20 minutes or a half hour, and then just take it from there. I mean, as long as Boo is not just attacking the other cats. Okay, Boo? I do feel sometimes like I need to distract him though. I don't know if Boo just tried to play with Simba, but you, did you see Simba's ears go back? Like, Simba was not happy with that. It's been nine minutes. So Boo's been out here for nine minutes. I think he was trying to play. I mean, because he backed away so easily. Look at all the cat stuff in this room. I mean, it's right now it's kind of overloaded with cat things. Simba's growling. It's been 10 minutes. They've been, hey, what are we doing? I told myself I was not going to like get involved or anything, but Simba, Boo wants to play with you, Simba. Come here, Boo. You just want to play, right? Simba's not looking too happy. Simba. Simba's growling. Boo, you want to play? Boo just wants to play. And this needs batteries. Okay, it's 11 minutes. 11 minutes, guys. Simba is not running away. Like, Simba's holding his ground.
I think Boo likes to show off a little bit when it comes to playing. Like, I wonder if Simba went to play with him, if Boo would be, like, too possessive of the toys, you know. But when he was outside with them, he played okay. It's been 15 minutes. Good boy, Boo. Good boy, Boo. It's been 15 minutes. You've been out here for 15 minutes with Simba. Good boy, Boo. What a good boy you are, Boo. Oh, good boy. So Simba walked himself into the collapsible crate. And now Boo's afraid of him, I think. So here's Simba in the collapsible crate. And here's Boo looking at him. They're smelling each other. Now Stella, meanwhile, is on the dining room chairs. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know if she's hiding there or what. But she's there. They're checking each other out through the crate. What are you doing? You want to play with Simba? Simba's just hanging out. Now I'd feel much better if Stella wasn't in the dining room. Simba's growling. Okay, so here we have Simba in the crate, and here's Boo hanging out together. I think Simba feels more comfortable being in the collapsible crate. Um, he seems to be relaxed, and um, you know, it's something different for them. It's not like Boo's behind the gate in his room, or Simba's behind the gate downstairs. They have been, Boo has been poking at the crate and they've kind of been exploring each other that way. 3.51 p.m. It looks like Simba has had enough of being in this pet crate. It looks like he's trying to get out of it. And Boo is watching intently from the top of the cat tower. All right, Simba. 6 p.m. Stella is relaxing in the collapsible pet crate. It seems that she likes this also. Now I'm not going to close her in there and let Boo out because Simba's up here also. And I don't want to freak Stella out. So maybe like if she does this again tomorrow or the next day, then maybe I'll try that. Plus, I don't want to stress Boo out too much in one day. So this is what is left of the cat's breakfast. I would say they ate about a third of it, so this was not something that they enjoyed. This would not be a success. And based on what I know now after the Advent experience where they got to taste all kinds of different foods and different treats and play with different toys, I now know that when it comes time to get them like a special meal, they really go crazy over the fish meals because out of all the food that they got to taste test during their advent treats, they really like the ones that were the fish the best. So 
that's what I now know going forward at the time when I bought these, when I bought the turducken and when I bought this uh, pot pie food for the cats. Um, it was before the advent experiment. So um, I think that's really interesting. That was definitely a learning experience. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Stella's not happy. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Good morning, Boo. It is 9-11 a.m. I've been up since 7.30, but I've been doing work on the computer. Hello. Hello, Simba. Hello, Stella. Simba, Stella, and Splash have been playing in the living room. For some reason, they all really like this collapsible pet crate. I mean, it's huge, and um, it's not staying here in the middle of their play rug but right now maybe it's a good training tool i don't know it's an experiment Eleven thirty a.m. and it actually feels a little bit warmer out it's 20 degrees today so it's a lot warmer compared to like eight degrees um, here's Hydrox he's laying in the Sun by the house he's very happy here I'm gonna give him some food and some water 
Okay, I just put Hydrox's food in his bowl along with some fresh water. Hydrox is not meowing. He is not even walking up to the food, which means his belly is full. There he is hanging out in the sun. Don't forget his black fur absorbs heat also, so. I'm sure he's toasty warm right there. He looks very comfortable. If we look at the thermometer in the sunroom near the shelter, it is about, I would say 56 degrees in there. So 56 degrees is pretty good compared to 20. That's almost a 40 degree difference. I just gave Boo about a half of a tablespoon of dry food and I also just put some dry food down here for Stella and the other cats. And I love this cat at digger thing because I put the dry food in those little cups and they have to dig it out. Yep, look at this. Yep, love this. All of the cats ate all of their breakfast. It is about 9 p.m. I just got home and I just gave Hydrox some food. He was outside standing near the door to the heated cat shelter and he was looking like he was hungry. So I gave him half a can of that grandma's pot pie because the inside cats don't like that. I gave him some water, but I need to finish unloading the car. 
There's a bunch of stuff I need to bring in. So I am going to see if I can do that without disturbing him. Right now it is about 14 degrees out. It is 9.18 p.m. and I put the gates in the door between the upstairs and the downstairs. Boo was in his room all day with the gates in the door. The other cats were on free roam all day. So they had plenty of time to interact with each other through the gates in Boo's door. So Boo is in the carrier. He's actually in the collapsible pet crate and um, he just crawled in there himself and I shut it. I zipped up the front. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Still is not happy. But she got her paw in it. Her claw stuck. Stella, Stella, this is Boo. Stella, hello Boo. Come here Stella. Stella has decided she'd rather hang out under the Christmas tree. Maybe she feels safer there like she's stalking Boo or something. There's Simba. Simba's looking like, what's going on? And here's Boo. Hello, Boo. He's figuring things out also. Boo just walked into this collapsible pet crate on his own. And uh, he laid down in there. So I said, let me zip it up and bring the cats up. So I picked up Stella and brought her up. And I don't know where Simba was, but he came out of nowhere. So Simba just walked back into the room. It's about 10 p.m. right now. And, uh... He walked right up to where Boo is, and then they were smelling noses. It looked like a friendly greeting between the two of them. Simba wants to be everyone's friend. Right, Simba? Okay, you just missed it, but Splash came into the room, and he went up to Boo, and he smelled him through this crate, and then he ran out of the room once I walked back in the room. Okay, so Boo is in the collapsible pet crate, and there's Simba laying next to the crate. There's Splash. He's been smelling, like, the crate and stuff. And Stella is under the tree. So right now, all four cats are in this room together. Boo's in the collapsible crate, and... Uh, Stella, Splash, and Simba are all really interested in Boo in the collapsible crate. Well, Simba and Splash much more interested than Stella, but Stella's watching. She's watching from under the tree. Splash just walked into Boo's room, so he'll be checking out Boo's room. Now, Simba was in Boo's room a little while ago, like when Boo first went in the collapsible crate, the first thing Simba did was like go into Boo's room and check it out. So right now Splash is checking it out. Stella decided to walk out from under the tree because Splash is in Boo's room making all kinds of noise. I think he's playing. Splash is playing with like that turbo scratcher with the ball that goes around. Yeah, can you hear that? I don't know if you could hear it. I'm not gonna move and scare Splash, but Stella's curiosity got the best of her, so now she's out here. Okay, now she's walking away. She's gonna go check out what the noise is coming from. Okay, Stella walked back in the room. It's about 10, 12. Where's Boo? You see Boo? You see your boyfriend Boo? Boo's in there. Is he laying down? Oh, Pooh's just hanging out. He's just sitting there. Pooh's been a very good boy in here. Stella's looking at him through the mesh. Now oh, she's growling. Stella! Stella, that's your baby daddy. That's your baby daddy, Stella. 
Okay, I got all the cats here for treats. There's Splash, there's Stella, there's Simba, and Boo. I'm going to take Boo's zipper down a little tiny bit. But right now we're all going to have treats. All four cats are going to have treats together, right? Right, guys? Everyone's having treats. Boo's going to have his treat through the zipper, okay? They all just got two treats. And Boo got his treats too. I'm putting them through the zipper over here. So here they all are. All four of the cats getting treats at the same time. Estelle's watching Boo. You guys want more treats? Would you like more? Okay, all four of them are eating treats at the same time, all on the same rug, although Boo's in the collapsible crate. And I know you guys probably can't see him because it's dark mash and he's a dark cat. I gave them each two more treats. And right now everyone's doing good. Everyone's eating their treats. They all just got two more treats. This time Boo got his first. They're all behaving. They're all happy. Simba's eating his treat right near Boo's little door here. I think Simba's trying to steal Boo's treats through the mesh. Stella walked away. Right now it's just the three boys. Simba's eating his treats right next to Boo's door and um, getting splashed a little bit closer each time. There we go. They all just got two more treats and Splash is getting closer and closer to Boo's door. All right? One more treats. So here's Simba, and I don't know what you guys saw on camera, but it looked like Boo was jumping on Simba's back and like getting ready to bite him, like right around here. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. 8.45 a.m. Boo slept on the bed all night. Good morning, Boo. The cats are getting their nature's variety instinct raw bites with some wheatgrass powder because I'm all out of fresh wheatgrass. 11.20 a.m. I'm just about to bring some food out for Hydrox and um, there he is right there. You probably can't see him. Okay. It's 11.20 a.m. and I'm outside. I'm giving some food to Hydrox. He was off in his hunting grounds um, on the other side of the fence. Then he came back when he heard me. And it's funny because all of a sudden I heard like a cat meowing, but it sounded exactly like Boo's little squeak. You know how Boo makes that little squeak? It sounded exactly like that. Then I turned around and it was Hydrox. I said, oh my gosh, these cats definitely have to be related. They have the same exact squeaky meow. The thermometer says it is 24 degrees out. The thermometer on the cat shelter says it is 58 degrees out. Okay, so I just took that small black accent rug that I had in the bathroom downstairs and someone left a comment with a really great idea to put the black rug into the sunroom area. So that's what I'm going to do because black absorbs heat. So that should be good. It should make it even more toasty warm in there than it was before. My only concern would be where the top of the sunroom meets the house because 
if it rains or snows or something, some rain or snow could get down in there. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just take some duct tape and run it across the top of that. Okay, so there's some duct tape along the top of it. I don't know how well that duct tape is going to stick. I just feel like duct tape loses some of its stickiness in these really cold temperatures. It is 7.15 p.m. and I just gave Hydrox half a can of that Turducken Perfect Bistro Cat food because he likes it, the inside cats don't like it. I haven't seen him though and I gave him some water. Right now it's 18 degrees out. And yeah, here is the cat shelter area and right here there's this vestibule and the inner door used to have like a clear plastic flap on it um, to hold the heat in but I don't think it has that anymore because when I checked the insulation on it this year I don't remember seeing it. Um, so what I did was on the outside of this vestibule I just put a clear plastic flap as a door. I don't know if you could see the duct tape holding it up. But there's a clear plastic flap as a door um, to help keep heat inside of there or just keep um, to try to keep cold air out and um, I don't want to put anything on the other side where Hydrox goes in and out all the time because I just don't want to disturb him um, I don't want to put something up and then have him not want to use the shelter because you know cats are funny like that so if he's using a shelter I'm going to leave the other side as is just because I always see him going in and out the other side I don't really see him going in and out this side. The temperature on the side of the shelter looks to be about 26 degrees. So it's a little bit warmer than it is outside and hopefully the inside of the shelter is warmer than that. It's about 10 p.m. right now and I am going to give Boo some treats. The downstairs cats just had some treats and um, now it's Boo's turn. He's getting the, uh, the Bench and Field Holistic Natural Feline Treats with added vitamins and minerals. He loves these. And um, right now, Boo's on free roam. The door to the downstairs is open, and there's a very low gate between the kitchen and the hall, which means that if someone should climb over the gate or jump over the gate, I'll hear them and I'll kind of know what's going on. Actually, you know what, if I could get Boo back into that uh, collapsible crate again today, that would be awesome. I don't know if he wants to go in there since he was in there yesterday. Go ahead, Boo, you could go in there. Come on. Here, here. Get your treats. Here's another one. Boo's a very smart cat and, oh, okay. Okay, that was easy. So Boo's in there, he let me uh, zip him up and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go get Stella. I'm gonna see if she's gonna hiss again today. She hissed really bad at him yesterday. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I brought Stella up and um, she stood right here and she hissed at him. Not as bad as yesterday though. So it was an improvement. Right now, she's going to hide under the Christmas tree, even though, even though I'm like jiggling treats. Usually when I jiggle treats, Stella's really interested in it, but not so much. And Boo's already trying to uh, figure a way out of this collapsible crate. Maybe if I give him some treats in there, he'll be a little happier. But yesterday, what happened was I was giving him treats through the zipper. Boo! And he actually was able to unzip himself out of there because I had maybe like a three inch gap. There was maybe like a three inch gap in the zipper and he was able to get himself out. Who's growling? Who's growling? Pooh, are you growling? Simba's up here now. Simba's checking out Pooh. He's rubbing up against the crate. Simba's like, what's going on here? Splash is about five feet behind me right now. 
Someone wants to relax. Come on, Splashy. Come see Boo. Come on, Splash. Come here, see Boo. Splash, you want to see Boo? Splash, would you like to see Boo? Stella's probably hiding on a dining room chair. It is 10, 11 p.m. and everyone has been just sitting around very nicely. So Boo is just kind of laying in this crate. And Simba's just been watching him from outside the crate. And Splash is in the hall. So, um, my battery's low on this camera, but I'm gonna let Boo out and see what happens. I open the door and Boo's still lying in there. I guess he likes it. I guess he's comfortable. Hello, Boo. Be nice. Be nice, Boo. Come here. Come here, Boo. He looks upset because Simba's on the other side. Come here. You're okay, come here. Come here, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, come here. Come here. Nice boy, you're a nice boy, boo. He just stretched his back legs. Come here. Splash is over there. Come here, boo. Right here. Come on. I'm pat you because you're a nice boy. You're a nice boy. Be nice. Be nice. Hey! 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 So here's Simba, and I don't know what you guys saw on camera, but it looked like Boo was jumping on Simba's back and, like, getting ready to bite him, like, right around here, which, you know, is not good. But right now, I don't feel like... I'm not feeling... Like, Simba's not flinching, and I'm not feeling... I'm not feeling any wounds, I'm not feeling anything, so hopefully Simba's okay. But that was really uncalled for. Boo. Boo, if you can't be nice to the other cats, we're going to have to part ways, okay? Like, you can't live here if you can't get along with the other cats. Do you understand what I'm saying, Boo? You can't live here if you're going to attack the other cats. I'm going to have to find a new home for you. Do you understand that? You're going to have to go somewhere else if you can't get along with the other cats. So you need to behave. And you need to not jump on them, Boo. If you jump on them and attack them, you can't live here. So think about that, Boo. Think about that because I'm serious. You can't attack the other cats and live here. 
We'll have to find you a new home somewhere else. Understand? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Look at me, boo. You understand, right? So you're going to be in a timeout, and you're going to think about what you did, and you're not going to do it anymore. We ended up getting eight inches of snow, so we got more than twice of what was expected. The forecast was for two to four inches, and we got eight inches. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. 9.15 a.m., Stella, Splash, and Simba were on free roam all night, and right now it is snowing. Good morning, Simba. You want to show everyone your fluffy belly? Simba's a fluffy boy. Fluffy? Fluffy boy? Good morning, boo. This is what the patio looks like with the snow. So it looks like maybe we've gotten an inch of snow. For some reason, it looks like there's more snow in the back than there is in the front, which is really weird. We're only supposed to get a few inches of snow today, so let's hope that's all we get. Downstairs, it is about 68 degrees, but for some reason, it always feels like it's colder than that. Hello, Stella. Hello, Stella. You a happy girl? Happy girl. Stella's a happy girl because she likes snow. Stella loves snow. The cats are getting their nature's variety instinct raw bites today. They're all very hungry. It's about 11 a.m. and I was in the kitchen and I heard a cat pawing at the door between the downstairs and upstairs. And I opened the door and it was Simba and he came right upstairs. And he walked into the hall and Boo was sitting in the hall and Simba came into the hall. And then Boo walked into the living room and Simba walked into Boo's room. So I said, let's see what happens if we turn the tables. So Simba's in Boo's room and the gates are on the door. So there's Boo right now in the hall looking into his room. And it's one gate, two gates, so it's fully gated. So, And there's Simba. Simba is perfectly happy sitting there and looking outside and looking out the window because that's where the cats used to love to look out the windows. Now Boo should be perfectly happy sitting in the front window and looking out that window. The only issue that we have is that the litter box is in Boo's room. There's no other litter box up here. So if Boo should need to use a bathroom, he doesn't have access to a litter box. Simba has access to a litter box downstairs. Cats have the litter boxes, but there's no litter box in where Boo is right now. It is 11.50 right now, and I'm having something to eat before I go outside and shovel a little bit for Hydrox, like around the shelters and stuff. And Boo, he's been laying on the cat tower in the front window, and Simba has been laying by the windows in Boo's room. They've both been peaceful and content, but of course the gates are up. It is 12.15 p.m. I'm just about to go outside and deal with snow. And I looked into Boo's room, and this is where Simba is laying. Simba is laying in the cat tower in Boo's room, exactly where Boo usually lays. Like, exactly. Right now, it is about 12.30 p.m., and we've gotten more snow than we were supposed to get. We're only supposed to get two to four inches of snow. And this is like, I would say, 
about six inches of snow, but thankfully it's powdery dry snow. So this is what the cat shelter is looking like. And this is what the heated feeder is looking like. I am going to shovel this stuff out. I'm gonna shovel path to uh, the cat shelter. But thankfully the way that the house is set up, meaning uh, the people house, um, do you see on the side there where there's no snow near the door to the shelter? So that's good. So Hydrox, hopefully he's in there and just like, you know, hibernating for a while. I was just clearing away the feeder and then I looked up and there's Hydrox. He's walking through the snow. I don't know where he was. Would you see his tail? So he's going to come through where I didn't clear, but I'm going to go inside and I'm going to get him some food. It is 1.15 p.m. I just went downstairs to get this extra litter box that I have. It's like a smaller litter box from when I first um, let the cats inside. And I stopped using this one when I got that loop sifting litter box. But So this is like an extra litter box and I figured, let me bring it upstairs, I'll put some litter in it. Because Simba does not want to leave Boo's room at all, like he would not want to leave. But then what happened is I went downstairs to get the litter box and I gave Stella some crunchies. I gave her a tablespoon of crunchies and all of a sudden I heard boom and I said, oh, it sounds like Simba jumped off the cat tower and uh, wants to get out of Boo's room. So I came back upstairs and sure enough, he's waiting by the door. So this cat somehow knew that I gave Stella some crunchies downstairs. Now I was not loud about it at all because uh, Splash was down there also. And um, I wanted to like sneak them to her. And yeah, so Simba knows, Simba knows. And there's Boo. It's almost 4 p.m. and we ended up getting eight inches of snow. So we got more than twice of what was expected. The forecast was for two to four inches and we got eight inches. So um, all this has been cleaned off for Hydrox. The bottom has been shoveled out. Um, I just heard the dry feeder go off, so that's working. Um, this has all been shoveled out. This has all been shoveled out. Um, and there, that one door has been cleared out and then a path uh, to the apartment under the house has been cleared out. And I did see Hydrox scoot out from the shelter um, through the side of the house. I guess he's afraid of the shoveling noises, but look, he has pathways to walk. The only thing like right here is this big pile of snow. So he really only has like one pathway. Okay, so everything has pretty much been cleared out. The best is going to be cleared out, but I just wanted to show you again. Um, so what you're looking at is like Hydrox's apartment under the house. And in that far back corner, you can see the vestibule to the heated cat shelter. So it stays clear in there. It stays dry in there. And a path has been cleared out over here. And um, Hydrox should be good to go. I'm just going to give him some food in the feeder and then he should be set for the night. It is 5.22 p.m. and Boo is on free roam. Simba is in the cat tower. Stella is by the Christmas tree in the door. The two of them just walked upstairs. I opened the door and they just came up. Yesterday Boo jumped on top of Simba and I did not like what was going on because it looked like he was biting him. And um, I didn't want that to happen, but when I checked Simba out, I did not find any bites on him, like any punctures or anything, so it's just something, you know, we need to be aware of with Boo. I just feel like he still needs to learn how to play properly, or maybe he's trying to, like, show dominance on the other cats. If they all just sit around like this, I am happy right now. Boo's here, Estelle's by the door, and Simba's on the cat tower. So Stella was sitting nicely by the door and then all of a sudden Boo decided he wanted to go and jump on her. So he ran over to her and, um, you know, jumped. I don't think he jumped on her. I think he jumped near her and then she ran into the dining room. Now it would be one thing if he only jumped on the other cats and if he was like playing and jumping. But if that progresses to like a serious fight... I don't want that to happen, and we've seen Boo do that, like, when he was outside. So, I don't know if Boo can get along with other cats. I mean, he was living peacefully with these cats when they were all outside, but that was, like, a year ago when Stella, Simba, and Splash came in. Yeah, it was exactly a year ago. It was last January. So. Boo. 
You gotta learn. You gotta learn to be nice, okay? We have to be a nice boy. We have to remember our manners. Right, Boo? We have to remember our manners and we don't jump on other cats. Remember, Sonia told you not to jump on other cats because other cats don't like it when you jump on them, Boo. They don't like it when you play that way. You have to be nice. Boo, you're a cat. Got it? You're a cat, Boo. You gotta be nice to other cats. Right now, Stella's not happy. Right, Stella? But at least she didn't run downstairs or anything. Like, she's holding her ground. Like, she's still in this room. Okay, I just realized that I can't feed the cats yet because this food is still seriously frozen. Uh, maybe the Instinct Raw Bites are a little less frozen, but those bigger uh, Primal Raw Nuggets are really frozen. These have only been out for about an hour and a half, so uh, we're going to have to wait a while before the cats eat. It is 6.05 p.m. I just randomly looked out the back door, and there's Hijox. He's eating his food, so that's good. Hopefully he'll just eat his food and then go in the shelter and stay warm. And I double checked today to make sure that um, the outlet is still working, that everything is still plugged in. So um, if the heated feeder is working, then the heated pet pad should be working also. They're hooked up to the same outlet, so. 7.17 p.m. I've been playing with Stella and Simba, and they were both in this crate at the same time. Then I said, oh, I'm going to go and get the camera. By the time I find the camera, Stella left the crate. Oh, here she comes. Maybe she'll go back in. We were playing with, like, these wiggly toys in the scratch and roll, because they love that. And they, for some reason, they really like this collapsible crate also. They like just hanging out in it. I do have to say at least Stella is making progress because you know she sees Boo in his drawer and she's not running away and she's not getting like super mad. So she's Stella's being more accepting of Boo. Because for a while like she didn't want anything to do with him. Like she did not even want to like be this close to him. Which is in like the next room. Seven thirty p.m. Today we have Stella in the collapsible pet crate. She walked in there on her own, then she laid down, and I zipped her in. And she wasn't too happy about that, but then she seemed to relax again. And I just let Boo out of his room. And um, I don't know. He seems a little bit afraid of Stella. 
Um, Simba's downstairs and Splash are downstairs and have the door shut. So I just want to see how these two interact while Stella's in the crate. So far, there hasn't been any hissing or anything. I really thought that when Boo walked over to the crate, Stella would start hissing and stuff, so. Okay, she's growling. Are you growling, Stella? You growling? She's, she's not growling right now, but she was growling. 8.54 p.m. and right now I am just documenting what just happened. So I came downstairs to put some stuff away. I'm still putting Christmas stuff away. And um, as I was coming back up the stairs, I opened the door to go in the kitchen and Boo runs past me and starts heading down the steps. Now he's never done that before. He's never tried to go downstairs. So he got about halfway down the steps. Now Stella was right there eating at the digger and Simba and Splash are on the green rug around here and uh, Boo came halfway down the stairs. Now I had no idea what he was going to do because he looked like he was going to charge Stella. Um, he was just like running. So I was like, Boo, go back upstairs. Boo, go back upstairs. So he then stopped, but then he kept going. So then I started going down the stairs after him. And at that point, he turned around and he went back upstairs and he ran into his room. So I think he's a little kind of, you know, maybe like shaken up by what happened. I don't know. He was taken by surprise. Obviously, he wants to explore downstairs and see what's down there. But um, I guess maybe he didn't expect to see all three cats there. Um, I don't know. Or he didn't expect for me to be like, no, boo, go back upstairs. Um, I don't know. Maybe he wants to just be with the other cats. Maybe I could put him in the carrier and bring him down. I don't want to just bring him down and let him loose because I still don't trust him not to jump on these cats and start fights with them. Because every day that he's out with the cats, he's been jumping on them. Let's talk about Dr. Elsie's cat litter right now because I really like this litter. I have like four boxes of it right here um, so I could uh, change the litter and the litter boxes this weekend. But with this sifting litter box, it's an absolute nightmare and I haven't had any problems with it until today. So it's been probably three or four weeks. Um, that I've been using it with the sifting litter box and again there were no issues. I've probably been using the litter with this sifting litter box for like three or four weeks and I do have to say with this loop litter box with the sifting litter box I do feel like the um, world's best cat litter does work better uh, with it but it's been working okay until today and um, I was scooping out the litter well I sifted it but then I had to scoop it because a whole bunch of it was stuck to the bottom of this. I don't know if one of the cats had diarrhea or something, but it was like a big amount of litter stuck to the bottom in like one big clump. So I scooped it out, but then there was still a whole bunch left in like these little grates. And I said, well, I better, I better go wash this and wash it out. And so that's what I tried to do. The only problem is that this litter turns to like concrete. Um, like I was trying to poke it through these holes and it was sticking to um, what I was using to poke it through. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I hope this doesn't like clog up the drain. But it doesn't even go down the drain. It's all just stuck to the sink. And now I have to go and kind of like wipe it all out of the sink. So um, I'm really not happy. Like I couldn't even get it completely out of this. Like there's no way. Maybe if it dries, maybe it'll be easier to get out when it dries. So that's what I'm hoping. So um, I'm going to dry this off and then I'll put it back. Um, under the other two trays where it goes right now, but um, yeah, so I'm really not happy with this Dr. Elsie's litter and the sifting litter box. I feel like it's fine for the other litter boxes, the regular litter boxes, but for um, for a sifting litter box, it just does not work. 10.07 p.m. I was playing with Stella with a toy. You see the toy she's laying on? So I was playing with that toy with her a little while ago and um, I was trying to get her to lay in the bed and it looks like she went in there on her own and she looks really comfortable. Those beds are so super soft and comfy. 
So I'm glad she's giving it a chance and using it. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Good morning, Stella. How are you? Good morning, Boo. So with all of the snow yesterday and the integration proceedings, I forgot to defrost the raw food for the cat, so... This morning they're getting tuna. I just looked outside and it's six degrees out. Oh my gosh, that's cold. This is Boo's food. He is getting the Trader Joe's tuna for cats with his herbs and some water. It is 11 a.m. I am giving Hydrox some fresh water and a whole big can of food. This is the Nature's Variety Instinct Champs Chicken Formula. This is what his shelter is looking like today. And if we look at the snow, we could see some cat tracks heading in the shelter direction. And that's what it looks like under the house in the shelter area. I'm leaving the snow on top of the sunroom because I th I'm hoping it works kind of like a um, like an igloo where it traps heat inside of it, which could be good. Now they say the snow is not going to melt or go anywhere for quite some time because it's not going to get above freezing, I think, until sometime next week, if we're lucky. But right now I'm pretty happy that you can see um, like the concrete patio in a lot of areas because it makes it potentially a lot less slippery. And thankfully this is all really dry powdery snow so that also makes everything less slippery because it's not like it's sheets of ice or anything. I think it's like 7.30 p.m. and according to this thermometer it is 6 degrees out. Okay maybe 7 degrees out. It is cold. I just gave Hydrox a full can of the Nature's Variety Instinct Pride Champs Chicken Formula. Gave him some fresh water and there he is. He came running out of his house and he's gonna eat his food and hopefully he'll go back into that nice warm shelter because it is really, really cold out here. And um, I know some people have mentioned maybe putting some rugs under there to keep his feet warm, but the rugs are not gonna keep his feet warm because the rugs are gonna end up being just as cold as everything else out here. And um, what might happen is if they get wet, I mean, they're gonna freeze if they get wet, but um, there's nothing worse than being cold and wet. I'd rather him be cold and dry. Um, you can get really dangerous conditions when you're cold and wet. So right now this is the best setup for him. Um, again, he has the shelter with the heated pet pad in it, with insulation, with comfy fleece blankets, and it is well protected. Right there you can see all the cat prints in and out, and then um, that sunroom is covered like an igloo, and then this front area now has like a plastic flap on it to try to keep some of the cold air out, but when the wind blows that flap does move. It's better than it was. And uh, it's, it's pretty good because it is a vestibule that does not go straight into the shelter. It goes into like a vestibule area. And the reason why uh, these shelters have two entrances is because these cats won't go into a shelter that only has one entrance. They always need like an escape route if a predator should come in. The cat wants to get out the other side. So that's why they have two entrances. Okay, I just came inside and there's Hydrox. He's eating his food and then I just wanted to mention one other concern that people had and that is the distance of the food to the shelter. Um, some people think it might be better to put the food right near his shelter and I just want to explain that it's never a good idea to put the food too close to the shelter because the food can attract predators uh, which can go after the cat. Uh, the food can also attract other animals. If you watch some of the videos from several months ago, you could see that there are raccoons and skunks and possums um, that walk through the yard at night who also look for food. So um, you don't want those near the cat shelter because they can go in and disturb the cat and you just want to try to keep that 
um, a good distance away. So right now, I don't know, these are maybe 10, 12, 14 feet away. Um, it would be nice if they're a little bit farther away, but I feel like that this would be like a good minimum distance for the food to be away from the shelter. So Splash is hiding under the bed for some reason. I don't know why, but instead of going down to eat with the other cats, he just wanted to stay near Boo's door. And um, the other cats, I gave him food downstairs like Simba and Stella. But I have to leave the door open because Splash is up here. So I'm trying to lure him downstairs. So I go under the bed with this laser pointer thinking, oh, I'll lure Splash out. Instead, what it did was lure Simba under the bed. So then I was able to lure Simba out with the laser pointer. But now Simba's playing with it. Boo was playing with it. I don't know what happened to him. He went, oh, there he goes. He went under the love seat. Well, I keep calling it a love seat, but it's a day bed. And Splash is still under the bed. And considering the fact that I just got home after a long day, I really just want to spend a little bit of time relaxing before trying to, uh, you know, integrate these cats and having to deal with everything that entails. Because it's not like I can just, you know, open the gates and let them do what they want because Boo has been jumping on them. And because of that, I feel like I need to just watch what's going on because I don't need to make any emergency trips to a vet or animal hospital when it's four degrees out and there's more than eight inches of snow. It is about 11 p.m. And I can't find Boo's favorite feather toy, like the feather toy on the string. And um, I found this one instead. And he has been going crazy over it. Tonight, um, Stella, Splash, and Simba have free roam. Boo had free roam last night. And um, I'm trying to just work off some of his energy before he goes in his room. And he's been having a really good time with this toy. Jumping around like a madman. I'm hoping to put away a lot of the Christmas stuff over the next day or two, which will give Boo more room to play. I have a bunch of stuff here, boxes and stuff that still needs to be put away. I just went to see the downstairs cats and they must have heard Boo jumping around and playing upstairs so they're all kind of ready to come up and see what's going on. Hello Simba. 
Hello, Splash. So I don't know what you can see, but Pooh is on the other side of the gate and Simba's like right here. They're practically nose to nose. And there's this laser pointer in between them. That splash is right there. Okay, guys, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. I'll see everybody tomorrow. It is 8 p.m. right now, and it looks like it's two degrees out. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. It's 9 a.m. Good morning, Boo. Good morning, Stella. Stella does not avoid Boo's room as much as she used to. And Stella, Splash, and Simba uh, were on free roam all night. And Stella has jumped on my bed twice this morning. And Simba has jumped on my bed twice this morning. And I think Splash has been growling at Boo. It is 11 a.m. and I'm just about to go outside and feed Hydrox. Um, Boo saw me getting Hydrox's food ready and started meowing. Um, so I gave him a little bit of crunchies. Boo already had his breakfast, so I don't know, I guess he just likes to eat canned food. But I wanted to talk about everything Boo has learned so far because the one thing he still needs to learn is not to jump on the other cats because they don't really like that. But let's see, what did he learn so far? He learned how to let me brush him. He learned how to let me pet him. He learned how to play with toys with me in such a way that I'm not getting scratched. He learned to sniff things without scratching the hand that presents the thing to him to sniff. If you remember, like, any time I would try to put something in front of him, he would scratch it. Um, he has now learned not to do that. He now sniffs instead of scratches. Boo has learned not to scratch my hand when I give him food. He needs to learn not to even think about jumping on kitchen counters because he's not going to get anything on the kitchen counter. And he's going to have to go in his room for time out, right? So anyway, Boo has learned a lot this year. The other thing he's learned is not to scratch my hand um, when we're playing with toys, not to be so possessive. I mean, sometimes he still does it, but most of the time he doesn't. And he's getting really good at not scratching for treats. It used to be if I, you know, put a treat out near him, he would scratch my hand. And he's learned not to do that most of the time again. But again, it's a learning process, so it is gradual. So if he could learn all of that, he can definitely learn how not to jump on other cats. Right, Boo? Right, Boo? The reason why this orange towel is on the floor is because um, snow has been coming in on boots. 
and then melting on the floor. So this towel has been drying up the melted snow. Okay, I just gave Hydrox a full can of the Instinct Pride Champs chicken formula and also some water. Look at all of the cat prints in the snow. I mean, at least I think these are cat prints. Um, these definitely appear to be Hydrox's prints. And then these are kind of weird because it's like something was trying to like poke in there. I don't know what that would be. I don't know if it's a different cat. You guys see all the prints? Maybe that's like a raccoon. I don't know. It's hard to tell in the snow. I mean, it does kind of look like a cat print. Maybe it's the other cat. It is 10 degrees out. I did not want to go anywhere today. I just wanted to, you know, stay home. But I need to change the litter in the litter boxes. And I need to go buy the other litter for the uh, sifting litter box. So now I am actually going to run a few errands. I figure if I have to go out for that, I might as well do a few other things I need to do. Okay, I'm just about to walk out the back door and there was Hydrox. He was eating his food. I guess he saw me and he's going back into the shelter. So I'm just going to walk out and... Uh, Going to the car. It is a little bit after 4.30 p.m. It is five degrees out. I just gave Hydrox another can of food. I gave him a full can of the Pride by Instinct Champs Chicken Formula. I gave him some fresh water. Everything is in this Thermo Kitty Cafe. This Thermo Kitty Cafe is one of the best products ever for outdoor feral cats. Okay, the cats are getting their typical dinner, which is the uh, Nature's Variety Instant Raw Chicken Bites, the Primal Raw Turkey Nuggets, and they're also getting some water. Now Splash was sleeping on the bed all afternoon. He doesn't often do that, so it was kind of funny. But I guess he was comfortable taking a nap there. Stella was napping in the cat tree in the front window. Right, Stella? I'm not sure where Simba was. All right, guys, ready to eat? You're ready to eat? Here we go, move over. Okay, guys, eat your food. Now, lately, Splash likes it when I kind of pet him very firmly. I used to pet him very gently, just because I thought that's what he liked, but lately, I could pet him like firmer, like I would pet like a normal cat. And sometimes even more firm than that. Like he likes it when I give his back a good squeeze. Right, Splash? And sometimes when I give them their food, like he's so used to having uh, this time when I pet him, usually I always pet him before they eat. And sometimes when I haven't had time, he'll look at me, he'll be like, why aren't you petting me? So like right now I'm petting him firmer than I would normally pet him before. And he seems to like it. I thought I felt something weird on his back, so I just want to make sure. See, like right now, I'm like petting him like normal. So for Splash, that's great. Okay, Splash. Hello, Boo. How are you? So Boo was on free roam today, and um, I was looking for him, and I said, where's Boo? And then he was actually sleeping here on his day bed. So he was really happy here in his room. So what I did was then I just put the gates up and I let the other cats up and uh, it was a win-win situation because then they came upstairs and they slept, um, you know, in the windows and uh, 
you know, I like it when they're up and they can all be up here and have daylight. So I try to split their time up here. Ideally, they would have had maybe some integration time today, but my schedule, I was just trying to get some other stuff done. So I'm hoping tonight. I'm hoping that tonight they will have some integration time. It is 8 p.m. right now. And it looks like it's two degrees out. Hello, Stella. I wanted to show you how cute Stella was laying in the new little pet bed. But when she heard the camera, she got up. This is where she was laying in this new Amazon pet bed. They love this bed. There's always a cat laying in it. And she looks so cute in that bed, so I was going to show you. But now it's just an empty bed. But let me show you something else. It's Splash. He's on top of the cat tower. Look how cute Splash is. And he matches the cat tower. His black fur matches the black carpet on the cat tower. Hello, Splash. Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable, Splash? Splash has been a very good boy today. Right, Splash? You're a good boy? And there's Simba. He's hanging out on the ottoman. He tried sneaking upstairs, but I wrangled him back down because I want Boo to have some time alone up on free roam so Boo can eat his food. I would like Boo to eat his dinner, and then in a little while, I'll give the cats a chance to go upstairs and they all can interact. Right now I'm playing with Boo with this toy on a string, on a stick. And I'm trying to tire him out. I'm gonna run him around. I cleared off this play rug so he just has like a lot of room to run back and forth. I figure I'll use up a bunch of his energy so when the cats come up, maybe he won't be so interested in jumping on them. Right now he's sitting on a scratch and roll, getting ready to pounce on the toy. You want the string? You don't want the toy? You'd rather have the string than the toy? Come on, Boo. Come on, Boo. It is mail time. Okay, let's open up some mail. Let's start um, with the smallest packages and work our way up to the largest packages. And here we have an envelope. It says, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger next to a giant cat. That is so cute. That's such a great card. It says, wishing you giant happiness now and in the new year with love, Camille and Grover, Marty and Ray. Well, thank you, Camille, Grover, Marty and Ray. That is a really funny card. It says, in loving memory of Fletcher. Oh, Boo's gonna pose. Okay, let's move on to this envelope. Okay, it is a $50 PetSmart gift card. How awesome is that? Now there's two pieces of paper in here, um, but all it says is that it was ordered by Michael C. So uh, thank you so much, Michael C. Um, this 
is really great. Uh, gift cards are always put to good use. I was actually in PetSmart earlier today buying some cat litter and a few other things. So thank you so much. You want to see where Boo is? Boo's sitting on the scratch and roll watching me. Here's Boo. And here's the package. What you get, Boo? What do we have here? It is Radha Lavender Oil. I could be pronouncing that wrong, I don't know. Um, it says Lavender Essential Oil Therapeutic Grade. That is so cool. I'm always using lavender oil. It says our Radha Lavender Essential Oil has a smooth and warm fragrance. This oil is great for aromatherapy, massages and relaxation as well as multiple therapeutic uses such as headaches, insomnia and coughs. Lavender oil is known for being the most versatile and relaxing essential oil. You can also use this oil with warm salt baths in the evening or with a diffuser by combining with Radha peppermint oil and chamomile, and chamomile oil. That is awesome. I love lavender oil. Actually, that's sealed, so I'm not going to open it. I want to open it and smell it, but um, I'll leave that right now. I love lavender oil. I'm actually uh, in the middle of a current bottle. I'm probably like halfway through the bottle, so this will be great um, when I use that up. Um, I use it all the time. Um, like this says, it's great for um, relaxation at night. Sometimes I'll, uh, I'll use it at night before I go to sleep. Um, it's also great um, to use um, in the bath. Um, it makes like a total like relaxing spa. And I also take like lavender spray with me when I travel. I use it in my car. I use it in my office. Um, it's just really, really good. Again, it has properties of like cleansing uh, negativity out of like the environment um, and stuff like that. So it's a really versatile oil and it's really great. And it's very relaxing. So thank you so much for that. This is sage. Love sage oil. I also use sage oil a lot. Um, I love making like a little room spray with it. Um, and this um, I often combine with lavender and frankincense. I like to use all three together to make like um, like a clearing spray for the room, especially when I'm traveling. If I have to stay in like a hotel room, the first thing I do is spray the room down with like an essential oil spray. It's also great around the house. It's great in my office, again, my car. And um, I love making a sage spray and also using it as like a body spray. If anyone is familiar with um, smudging, um, and like burning sage to, uh, again, to clear the atmosphere, like clear the air in a room. Um, that's how I kind of use, uh, the sage oil also. I find that it can have a similar effect. Um, I just love sage oil. So, uh, thank you so much for that. That's awesome. These are so great. Now, unfortunately, there's no... There's no note that says who this is from. There's a packing slip in here, but that's it. So um, thank you so much to whoever sent this. Um, I really appreciate it, and I will definitely be putting these to great use. Yeah, and actually, you know, for Christmas, I got, um, they're like dryer balls, but they're made out of wool, and you can put essential oils on the dryer balls, and then when you put them in your dryer, uh, it makes like your laundry smell great. So um, I'm going to be using these um, with those also. So thank you again. And this entire time, Boo is sitting on the scratch and roll, like just watching me. See him? He's just staring at me. Hello, Boo. Maybe I tired him out from all the playing. Another box. This 
says, a gift for you. Hi, Lucky Farrell's mom. Thank you so much for caring for and loving Stella, Simba, Splash, Boo, and Hydrox and letting us all see and enjoy them every day. Happy holidays to you and all yours from Alexander Ginsburg. Well, thank you, Alexander. What do we have here? Oh, this is heavy. This is really heavy. There's a pump. It is Zesty Paws Pure Wild Alaskan Salmon Oil. All natural skin and coat support. 32 ounces. It says it promotes healthy heart, joints, and immune system. Nourishes skin and coat. A source of powerful fatty acids. Contains anti-inflammatory properties. Delicious flavor pets will enjoy. It says nutritional info per teaspoon. Total fat, 4.8 grams. Saturated fatty acids, 1.1. Monounsaturated fatty acids, 1.3. Polyunsaturated fatty acids, 2.4. Total omega-3 in milligrams, 1,110. And then it has EPA and DHA, 480 and 528 respectively. And then it has crude fats, moisture, omega-3s, and the rest. It says it's made in the USA. All natural salmon oil. And the ingredients are salmon oil and mixed cockerels, suitable for cats and dogs. It says Zesty Paws Pure Salmon Oil is an all-natural dietary supplement derived from wild Alaskan salmon, jam-packed with powerful omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Salmon oil delivers premium nourishment to dogs and cats of all sizes. Salmon oil contains a wonderful bounty of EPA and DHA, which are healthy omega-3 fats that provide vital nutrients for the skin, coat, and body. These essential fatty acids help to support proper joint function, heart health, and skin coat condition, as well as, well as enhancing the immune system to make your four-legged friend healthier, happier, and zestier for life. Suggested use. Add the appropriate amount of salmon oil to your pet's meal by referring to the weight chart below. For best long-term results, use regularly. And then it has their body weight. So it says up to 12.5 pounds, they get half a pump, and then 12.5 to 25 pounds, that would be one pump. So, um, and then on the bottom it says caution for canine or feline use only. Do not exceed the recommended dose in the case of accidental overdose. Contact a health or veterinary professional. Discontinue use immediately if new or worsening symptoms occur. That's interesting because I would think uh, that if it's pure salmon oil, that it would be suitable for humans too? I mean, are there different grades? Is there like a pet grade and then a human grade? That's real interesting. It says, want a free product? Claim yours here. So, um, yeah, this is cool. Um, this is something, uh, that would be great to add to the cat's diet. Maybe that's why, um, they really like fishy food so much maybe they're actually like craving more uh, omega-3s and um, fish oils it could be I used to take fish oil supplements um, years ago I would say probably like around 10 years ago for a while I was taking them uh, they were really good and then um, I stopped for a while and then I started very recently just taking cod liver oil again, just especially in the winter. For anyone who suffers from like seasonal affective disorder um, in the darker months, one of the great things to take for that um, are omega-3 oils. Um, obviously vitamin D is something that's great to take, so like cod liver oil has both vitamin D and um, healthy fats in it, so um, that can be helpful for uh, that kind of thing. It's also just good to have to boost the immune system uh, in the winter. So uh, this will be great for the cats. Thank you so much, Alexander. Okay, next one. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. Everything here is wrapped so nicely. Look how pretty that paper is. It says, Dear Lucky Ferrells, Happy Holidays. I took my human's car keys when they were sleeping to get you a little something. Shh, Smokey Jones. Thank you, Smokey Jones. Boo's playing with the, he's playing with the packaging. Oh no, he's playing with that mouse. The mouse is hitting the packaging. Okay. Look at this pretty cat. For the house. Okay. This is pretty paper. Oh, look at this. It's the Zoom Mist. It's the Frankincense and Myrrh Zoom Mist. Aromatherapy Room and Body Mist. That's great. Look how cute. It says number two for the human. Oh, am I supposed to do this in a certain order? Another cutie. Number three for the kids. Oh, okay. I guess I'm doing it in the right order. Good, 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 good. Okay, so this one is for the human. Ooh, nice. This is Bach Rescue Remedy Spray, Natural Stress Relief. It's so funny because I was literally thinking that I need to buy more of this because I'm just about out. Uh, I always keep this in my purse and uh, around the holiday times I was using it more than I normally do because my schedule was ridiculous and um, had to attend a lot of events that I wasn't too crazy uh, about attending. So um, this is great. Uh, it says natural stress relief, discreet mouth spray, fast acting. Um, if you've never used Rescue Remedy, I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe it. Well, first of all, um, with the spray, you just spray it in your mouth like you would if you've ever used like Banaka or one of those um, mouth fresheners that you just do like a few sprays. And um, it's not something that you're going to feel right away. And it's not something like you're taking uh, medicine or drugs um, because it works very subtly. You know it's working well because you don't even realize it's working. You just, um, I guess the best way to describe it is that it just increases your comfort level, if that makes any sense. So situations that you might normally find uh, uncomfortable, um, it helps make comfortable um, in a way that you don't even realize it's doing that. I guess you could say it helps take the edge off. Like if you're in a stressful situation, uh, you might feel a bit edgy and it helps take the edge off. But it doesn't do it in a way that you're aware of, if that makes any sense. It's just really subtle and um, I find that the um, the Bach remedies really work for me. Now I tried them, the first time I tried the Bach remedies uh, was years ago. I don't even know how long ago, let's say probably around 10-ish years ago. And um, at that time I didn't really notice anything, like I didn't really notice that they had any effect on me so I just kind of was like, oh, okay, yeah, these don't work for me. But then as I became healthier and got more into like uh, natural health and a natural lifestyle and I worked on uh, detoxing my body of, you know, just all of the chemical buildup that it had absorbed through the years, 
then uh, I noticed that I'm much, much more sensitive to uh, stuff like this. So um, that's why uh, I find it really works for me also. And some people might say it doesn't have any effect on them. And maybe that's true. Um, but for me, this stuff works great. So thank you so much. Okay, now this is for the kitties. Look at that little kitty. I wonder if that's what Stella looked like as a kitten. She probably looks similar to that. I love this color. It's like aqua color. Love that. Oh my gosh. Look at these that is so cute you think i'm gonna be able to get the cats to wear these i think i could probably get these on simba maybe boo this is so cute oh my god and there's one here for hydrox also can you imagine can you imagine if i could get one of these on hydrox someday that would be so funny maybe i could get one on stella it kind of matches splash's nose like you know how splash has like this is almost like Splash's black nose shape. Look how cute. Thank you so much. That will be hilarious if I could get these on the cats. I've never saw those before. I don't know where you found those. That is so funny. Thank you so much. Let's see if we can put them on Boo. Can we put them on Boo? Will Boo wear them? You don't want to wear them, Boo? What is this? There's a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know where to start. I don't see a note. Okay. I don't know what this is. Schneider Electric. I don't know if this is like a fuse or a battery. Oh, it's a lamp module. One unit of Schneider electric lamp module. Okay, is this like the last thing I'm supposed to open? I don't know about that. We have a Wuggles wool ball with feathers cat toy. Fuzzy felted wool. Okay, we know who's going to love this, right? Boo loves anything with feathers on it. It says, you've made the perfect choice. Wuggles wool cat toys are made from all natural felted wool with the scent and texture cats can't resist. Fun for your cat to bat around and pounce on. Wuggles wool ball will be your cat's favorite toy. Yeah, it could be. Who's walking by? Is he going to take it? Is he going to take it? What's he going to do? Okay, boo, move over, move over, boo. And then we have crinkly balls, crinkle balls, cat toys. Ooh, a twelve pack. So that's great. They like playing with these. This reminds me that they got similar crinkle balls for Advent, and I have no idea where any of them went. Somewhere. There's a black hole for cat toys in this house. And I always think, oh, I'll just find them under furniture. But every time I look under furniture, I never find them. So I have no idea where they are. Boo's moved over to this side. This looks like a pizza. Oh, it is a pizza. It says cat pizza. Kitty has tried all the rest. Now try the best. Easy ology pets. Is it a pizza? Oh, my God gosh look at this how cute is that it's a pizza we have pepperoni tomato onion cheese and mushroom and then we have a pizza that is so cute like it's making me hungry for pizza Who's smelling it? 
Does it have catnip? All right, boo, I'm putting that away. I'm putting it away, boo, because I don't want you to have catnip now because I want you to integrate with the cats, okay? No catnip right now. Well, that is awesome. I've never seen a cat pizza before. They are going to have a lot of fun playing with this, and I can only assume uh, that it's full of catnip because Boo's very, very interested in it. Um, it says uh, easyologypets.com. So um, that's great, and I don't know who sent this. So thank you very much to whoever sent this. Now we have the last package, and I have to be careful because, like, Boo is close by. I guess, I guess he smells catnip on the rug. Watch out, Boo. Okay. This says, hi, Lucky, something your gift from Smarty Plum and Cheese Puff. Thank you so much, Smarty Plum and Cheese Puff. See how Amazon printed that? They should do better. We have Instinct Raw Boost Mixers. These are freeze-dried raw chicken. The cats love these. I was just giving some to... Uh, the cats yesterday sometimes I give it to them as treats um, and also I give this to them in the uh, inside automatic feeder um, I give it to them with some dry food when I'm going to be away uh, more than 24 hours uh, because these don't go bad when they're in the uh, dispenser and then we also have a bag of Purina Beyond Superfood Blend Herring Egg and Sweet Potato Recipe. Herring is the number one ingredient. That's funny because I just ate some herring today. It says no corn, wheat, or soy, no poultry byproduct meal, no added artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. Okay, boo. Okay, boo. Natural cat food. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Now, I think I think they're going to like it because um, the number one ingredient is herring. And um, they're into fishy foods. So it's herring, chicken meal, brewer's rice, whole barley, pea protein, whole oatmeal, dried egg product, uh, beef fat preserved with mixed tocopherols, dried yeast, sweet potatoes, natural liver flavor, canola meal, L-lysine monohydrochloride, fish oil, sodium bisulfate, and then we go into all kinds of vitamins and minerals. And uh, yeah, that's cool. What does it say on the back? It says, what's in the food? Herring, egg, and sweet potato superfoods known to be nutrient dense. Chicken meal made from chicken cooked at high temperatures to remove water and fat, leaving a source of high quality protein, four times more protein than chicken commonly used in pet food. Brewer's rice, high quality carbohydrate source for energy. Barley and oatmeal, high quality nutrient rich carbohydrate and fiber sources. Pea protein, yeast and canola meal, high quality protein sources rich in amino acids. Beef fat, rich source of energy and essential fatty acids. Natural liver flavor, a natural way to enrich your cat's mealtime experience. Now, that's a little bit weird. Natural liver flavor. Like, I would understand if they put, like, liver in it, but liver flavor. And then essential nutrients to ensure our 100% complete and balanced recipes meet the daily adult cat requirements for key nutrients. So, there's no corn, wheat, or soy. There is no poultry byproduct meal, and there are no added artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. So that's cool. So, um, so this will be great um, to swap out with the dry food that they're currently feeding. And I'm sure Hydrox would also uh, enjoy this because he doesn't get as much 
fishy food as the indoor cats do. I uh, haven't been giving him any canned tuna um, when the indoor cats get, um, when I forget to defrost the raw food for the indoor cats, they usually get some kind of fishy food in a can. Um, and Hydrox usually doesn't. Hydrox has been eating a lot of turkey and chicken in the cans. So because this um, has a lot of herring in it, I'm thinking he might really uh, enjoy this. So thank you very much, Smarty Plum and Cheese Puff. Uh, these are great. Okay, I am downstairs with the cats. We are getting some treats. We're getting wellness kittles. Tasty, crunchy cat treats. This is the salmon and cranberries recipe. They're all eating their treats. They each got two. Simba. Splash! Almost done. Oh, you want to eat it out of my hand? Want to eat it out of my hand? Who's going to eat it out of my hand? Yes, Del. Yeah, some splashy, I mean. Still? Some splash. Okay, one more each because we're almost out. We're almost out, almost none left. Splash. Still? Simba? Splash. Flash. That's it. That's it. No more. That's it. No more. Empty bag. Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. Good morning, Boo. How are you, Boo? Hello, Boo. Boo was on free roam all night, but he slept in the cat tower in the front window.
Della is having some wheatgrass this morning. Oh, and Simba is also. Because yesterday I was in PetSmart, I had to buy some cat litter, and they had fresh wheatgrass there. So I picked up a new container of it, and uh, hopefully, maybe today or tomorrow, I'll be able to start my grow my own wheatgrass kit and see how that goes. Nine thirty eight AM Today's splash is in the cat tower. It is eleven twenty eight AM. I just came outside to give Hydrox some food. He has the feeder which goes off in the mornings. I'm probably gonna check on that feeder right now. It is about fifteen degrees out, but the sun is shining and uh it feels warm, but of course that's in comparison to like five degrees last night. And when I looked at the temperature this morning, uh, it was like two degrees. So it got down to zero last night or really, really close to zero. So this is what the cat shelter is looking like. Um, you can see from the tracks that Hydrox is really only using that side door, which is under the house. Um, this door here, um, has not really been used. There's no tracks going up to it. There's some tracks here going um, Checking out what's in like this sunroom thing uh, but that's about it and um, Yeah, so hopefully if it's sunny today the sun will help Evaporate some of the snow nothing has been melting uh, Because it was still below freezing, but the snow has been shrinking and some of the snow that's on the patio has disappeared like this big area, so it must be evaporating some of it. I see Hydrox, do you see him? He just walked out of the shelter, he's under the house in that little area there. You can see just part of him right now. So he's been in that nice toasty shelter. So in the super cold weather, he's getting a full can of the cat food. There's Hydrox, he's eating his food. He's reverted back to being scared of me or just um, like scarier than he's been. For a while he was kind of coming out of his shell a little bit, but I don't know, maybe with the weather he's just not in the best mood. Remember, feed your feral cats, especially when it's winter and it's cold out and there's snow, because what would Hydrox be doing right now if I wasn't giving him this food? He'd be out scavenging it, maybe trying to get one of the other neighbors to give him some food. There's not a whole lot of hunting that he could be doing with this much snow. I want to reiterate the fact that I will never again use Dr. Elsie's litter in this loop litter box or any sifting litter box because I just spent about 15 minutes poking through all these holes with like a small utensil to get all of this stuck litter out of it. It gets wet and it's clay, so it turns into these really sticky and stubborn lumps. And it was just really a nightmare. And I feel like I'm not going to get this like 100% clean for quite some time just because that clay is so freaking stubborn and I'm working on this like utility tub. So, um, Maybe if I could take it outside, like if the weather warmed up and I could take it outside and give it a good scrub and hose down. Um, but yeah, I, from now on I'm sticking to uh, the world's best cat litter with this litter box. This is the cat litter that I bought in PetSmart yesterday. I went to buy the world's best cat litter in the red bag. They actually had it on sale um, because that's what I've used in the past. And then I saw this. This says it's advanced. It's the world's best cat litter, multiple cat strength. This is zero mess with concentrated power, two times 
better clumping and more odor control with less litter. And um, I did not put this entire bag in there. This is a 12 pound bag. And the uh, World's Best Cat Litter, the multiple cat strength in the red bag, it's like, it was like a 14 or 15 pound bag. It was a few pounds heavier. Um, but I bought this one instead. I would say this is about three quarters of the bag and that's all I'm gonna put in here. Now I'll leave the rest for um, you know, the future when I need to uh, top it off. You know, after you scoop out some clumps, then the amount of litter goes down. So whatever's left in the bag, I could put back in the litter box. So on the back it says for one cat, this can last 75 plus days. Wow. For two cats, it can last 35 plus days. And for three cats, it could last 25 plus days. Uh, once a month, I give all the litter boxes a really good scrubbing and then I replace all of the litter. And to keep me like on schedule with that, I try to do it the first weekend of the month. I find uh, if I do something like that, like if I set a schedule like that, like a repeating schedule, I actually don't forget about it. And um, I just make sure I make time in my schedule to make that happen. So um, that's my current litter schedule. And this is the first time I'm using this advanced zero mess uh, litter. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Um, anything has to be better than that Dr. Elsie's litter in the sifting litter box. I do like the Dr. Elsie's litter in the other litter boxes. I find it works well. But for this sifting litter box, I'm, I'm going uh, back to the world's best cat litter. Okay, I just uh, cleaned out Boo's litter box and put some fresh litter in. And it came back into his room and here he is. He likes to lay in the sun. So what happens is as the sun moves around the room, so does Boo. So usually around this time of day, he'll be laying on the floor somewhere. A lot of times it'll be on top of one of his scratchers. And then when the sun's on the day bed, he'll be there. And uh, then when the sun's in the cat tower, he'll be there. So right now I have to vacuum. So he's not gonna be happy. He's gonna run under the day bed. Ready? I also want to rave about this new vacuum. So um, I'm still vacuuming the house on this charge. They say a charge could last for like 20 minutes of vacuuming and I vacuumed all around the litter downstairs. Like when I was changing the litter boxes, I vacuumed out that whole area. And then I went upstairs and I vacuumed out Boo's room. Then I was vacuuming the hall and part of the living room, like around the cat trees and everything. Now I'm downstairs, I'm vacuuming the green rugs and I'm vacuuming the cat tower and uh, check this out. So this is pre-vacuum and this is post-vacuum. There's like a huge difference and none of the other vacuums that I've ever used on this cat tree made such a big difference. So there it is before I use the vacuum. And there it is after I've used the vacuum. I mean, it barely took any time at all, and it is just like, there's like no hair on it, which is amazing. I mean, there's always gonna be a few strays, but there's like a huge difference. Now, I'm not trying to sell a Dyson to anyone. It's just, I really like this product. I think the reason I like it, there's two main reasons why I really like this. One is it seems more like a power tool than a vacuum, which is awesome. And the reason why is because it has a ridiculous amount of suction and also because it's cordless. So there's three things that I really like about it. Uh, the fact that it's cordless, the fact that it has amazing suction and the fact that it feels more like a power tool than a vacuum. The tree is coming down today and I am half sad because I am going to miss the tree. I like having a live tree um, for Christmas, but at the same time, I'm happy uh, because I have extra room now I could put everything back where it was or maybe even like rearrange some furniture But I wanted to make an observation 
while I'm filming these videos. So this was the first year that uh, the tree was not in front of the window, but it was also the first year that the tree was not watered as much as it is normally watered because the cats were hanging out under it. I didn't want them drinking the water. I did not water it as much. I would say um, the entire time the tree was here, maybe I watered it like three times, like that would be it. And normally I water it a lot more than that. I keep it uh, watered like uh, every other day or every day. So here's what happens when you don't water a tree. It turns into like a cactus. Like it is so dry right now. And all of these needles are like really prickly. It's like now I understand why they call them needles because when they dry out, they do get uh, sharp. And um, like the branches are like really brittle. Like do you see how brittle this is? It is super brittle and I've never had a tree get to this state. I like to buy my Christmas trees the week after Thanksgiving. So not the day after Thanksgiving, like, you know, you have like Black Friday and then Small Business Saturday. I don't like buying my tree that soon, but I like to buy it the weekend after that. And this year, I did not buy it that early. And that's another reason why the tree is so dry. I've also found that the longer you wait to buy a tree, the more dried out the tree is when you actually then put it up. Because if you buy it sooner, like when it's uh, closer to being cut, like closer to coming off the farm, and then when you put it in water, it just stays better. So, um, so that's the story of this year's tree. I was really happy with it. I like the shape of it. I like the size of it. It was a little bit small. I do like trees that are a little bit taller than this, but I think it worked well for the first year with the cats and the first year with shatterproof ornaments. So um, that was it. Thank you for your service tree. Uh, it was a lovely holiday season with you in the house and um, I will be taking you outside so you can be recycled. Oh my gosh, I totally just realized that Stella is like sitting in the crate watching everything. Like, and she's really enjoying it too. I wish you could have just seen her face. She's like, what is this? Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Oh my god, you guys just missed it. So I'm just getting up and I'm walking down the hallway and all three cats were right outside of Boo's door. Stella, Splash, and Simba, all three of them. This is huge progress. Now, right now, Stella and Simba walked into the kitchen because they're waiting for their wheatgrass, but Splash is still here. Good morning, Splash. Stella and Simba are eating their cat grass. Stella has very high expectations for herself and her sons, and she expects all of them to be very well-mannered, even though she sometimes may act like a queen. But she's allowed to do that because she's the only female. Right, Stella? Hello, Splash. How are you? Splash loves it when you scratch his back. The thermometer says that it is 68 degrees down here. For some reason, it always feels colder. The cats are eating their Nature's Variety Instinct raw chicken bites for breakfast. I also put some water in there. Okay, guys. Good morning, Boo. Boo is in the litter box, so he has some dust on his head. And that's because the litter box has high sides. So he rubs his head against the sides sometimes. But look, 
when he rubs against the arches, and then the dust comes off his head. So I noticed that um, this toy fits perfectly on top of this turbo scratcher like I mean it's a perfect fit so uh, I put that on there yesterday and uh, you know it's something a little bit different for Boo so um, it provides some variety for him and I think Boo has been enjoying the new setup of this room two pieces of furniture were taken out of it so it does feel a little bit more spacious and I just think it flows better um, the day bed was put on the opposite wall and then his food and the feeder were moved over to this wall and his litter is now on the opposite wall and then this little TV table um, is on the opposite wall so things were just kind of flip-flopped around boo you want to eat some food want to eat some food boo would you like to eat some food today Boo, you want to go outside? Boo, would you like to go outside? You want to go outside and play in the snow? Boo, do you want to go outside and play in the snow? No, you just want me to pet you? You're just saying rub my back, pet my back? Boo, your fur is getting so long. Boo, would you like to go live outside with Hydrox? No, that was a no. That was a, are you crazy? Boo, you want me to let Hydrox inside and live with you? Come on. Boo. Boo, look how long your fur is getting. So it seems that someone found the Zebedee mouse and uh, chewed it to the point where there's no stuffing in it and it is soaked. Absolutely soaked. Now, I don't know if it was Boo or any of the other cats. Like, I have no idea who it was because the cats were on free roam last night and Boo has been out of his room all morning. So, it could be any of them. And, um, yeah, that's kind of weird. Hello, boo. It is about 12.15 p.m. and it is 24 degrees out. I just gave Hydrax a full can of cat food and some fresh water. It is around 7.50 p.m. I just got home. I gave Hydrax some food. He is getting a full can of the Pride by Instinct Champs chicken formula. He's also getting some fresh water. It is 22 degrees out. Hydrox is eating his food. I just came inside and it looked like Hydrox was like walking across the snow from the back fence area. I could be wrong, but it looks like he came across the snow. Um, anyway, he's eating his food right now. It is 8.30 p.m. and uh, Boo has played for a little while and then he ate his dinner and I brushed him for a little while and uh, right now the door to the downstairs is open and Stella, I see she's come up. She's wandering around the other side of the room right now. Boo has not seen her because she's behind Boo. She's on the other side of the crate. And um, hello, Boo. And we'll see what happens. We'll see if they get along. And if they don't, Someone will have to go in a timeout.
You just want to hang out? Would you like me to brush you? Do you want me to brush you? Yes? Brush you? Brush you? Yes or no? Okay, right? Right, Boo, you're a good boy. Okay, he just saw Simba. You're a good boy, Boo. Hey! Let's play. Come on, let's play. Okay, so there is a ton of Christmas stuff that I need to put away right now. Like this whole bag. These are all the ornaments that were on the Christmas tree. And uh, instead of packing them up, I just put them all in the bag. And they all need to be packed up and put away nicely. Boo. What are you doing? Want me to brush you? Would you like me to brush you, boo? How are you, boo? See, they get along so nice through a gate, but what are you doing, boo? Can you be nice, please? Can you be nice? Simba, are you okay? Simba, are you okay? Boo, are you gonna be a good boy? Are you? You need to be a good boy. Simba's nice to you. Boo, Simba likes you. Simba likes you, Boo. Stella's just sitting here like, what's going on? Okay, so Boo just charged at Stella and Stella is growling under the desk. I feel like Boo is trying to play with the cats, but he's just not going about it right. Like he just needs to learn how to interact in a positive way. Now, Stella has not run or anything, like she's still here under the desk. I just moved a desk here, that's part of the furniture rearranging over last night. And Simba is under the dining room table, but like he looks normal. Like he doesn't look like he's afraid or anything. And here's Boo on the scratch and roll. And for Boo, this is like getting ready to attack position. It's just how he is. Boo. Remember I said you can't jump on cats, right? I said we don't jump on cats. If you want to jump, you could jump next to them. You can jump near them, but we don't jump on them, remember? Because Boo, if you want them to play with you, you have to be nice to them. Boo. You can play with the cats, but you have to be nice to them. Boo, if you're nice to the cats, then they'll play with you. Don't you want to play with the cats? Cats only want to play with cats that are nice to them. You know that. Right? They want you to be nice to them so they could play with you. Stella, you're going to be nice to Boo, right? You're gonna be nice to Boo, because that's your boyfriend. That's your boyfriend, Stella. You guys had babies together. So Boo is upset that the other cats left him outside. That's what's going on with Boo. He's upset that they all came in last year at this time, and he was still out there. Right, Boo? That bothers him. He's bothered by that. Because, you know, they were his friends and his family. So, that's why Boo has some hard feelings towards the other cats because one day they were all living outside together and then the next day they weren't. Now of course that happened because Boo did not come around nearly as much as the other cats did, especially Stella and the kittens. Stella and the kittens came around every single day for all of their meals, they slept on the patio, 
Stella and the kittens had the exact same progression that Boo did this past summer when Boo all of a sudden came around every day for all his meals and started, you know, sleeping in the apartment and spending all his time on the patio. That's what Stella and the kittens did the year before. And um, so when Stella and the kittens came inside, it was because um, they were getting fixed and it was winter time. And it was the best thing for them to recover from their surgeries and the weather was really bad and months went by and then they just really enjoyed being inside. But Boo was upset because they left him outside all by himself. So, you know, people say cats don't remember a lot of things, but cats remember a lot more than we give them credit for. There's also a lot of people that say that cats don't understand a thing when you talk to them. People leave comments on my videos all the time that like, why are you talking to cats like they understand you? They don't understand a word you say. But then it's really funny because then when you have a conversation with them on camera where it's 100% apparent that they understand what you're saying, then everyone jumps down your throat. Oh, how dare you say that to a cat? I mean, you can't have it both ways, guys. You say that cats don't understand a thing that people say, and then when you say something to a cat that they don't like, they, like, jump down your throat for saying it. I mean, it's absolute ridiculousness, but that's why I have to post these videos, and that's why other people that interact with cats need to post similar videos because there is so much misinformation out there, and there's just so much wrong thinking when it comes to cats. And if we don't all start spreading some truth and just showing um, different situations and different experiences, nothing is ever going to get better. So I encourage everyone who um, has cats, has knowledge of cats, and has experience with cats to post your own videos and share that knowledge and information and put your truth out there. So anyway, so I really think that's one of the issues that Boo is having with the other cats. Right now he's staring at Stella. Stella's under the desk by the wall and she's staring at him. Stella is growling really bad. I don't know if you guys could hear it. Stella! Stella, why are you growling? Stella, that's Boo! Stella, that's your baby daddy! Boo, do you remember your babies? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't leave you outside. So Boo's hanging out here on the scratch and roll. And Stella is here under the desk. And she was actually playing for a little while. I had her playing and Boo was just hanging out on the scratch and roll. Hey, Boo. What do you want to do? You want to play with us? Okay, then we're going to swap and Stella's going to get this one. You can't have all the toys, Boo. You can't hog all the toys, Boo. You have to share your toys, right? Right, you share your toys? Stella. I'm gonna give Stella a scratch and roll. Okay, I'm taking out two wands and there's two scratch and rolls. I'm gonna use one in my left hand, one in my right hand. Stella's on the left, Boo's on the right. And uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so here's Boo. He's been hanging out here on the scratch and roll. I've been playing with him with this cat wand. And there's Stella. She's been hanging out. Hey, Boo, be nice. You don't jump on top of cats, remember? She's been hanging out here. Oh, here's Simba. Hey, hey, Boo. Boo, 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 Boo. Boo, Boo, Boo. Boo, Boo, Boo. Boo, 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 Boo. Boo, Boo, Boo. Boo, Boo, Boo. You don't jump on top of cat. Right now it's been about 15 minutes since cats have been out here. And um, we'll see what happens. I feel like I can't, uh, you know, leave Boo unsupervised. Okay, so there was just a big fight here in the dining room under the table between Boo and Stella with like a lot of cat screaming. 
Um, I did not see it. I saw just uh, when I walked in the room and broke it up. Um, I did not see the cats um, on top of each other, but there was obviously some kind of fighting going on. And right now, Stella is on the dining room chair and uh, Boo's in a timeout in his room. Okay, Stella is not on a chair. I don't know where she is. Stella's here in the kitchen, and I feel like I need to kind of just make sure she's okay. Because I don't know what went on. I did not see what went on. You okay, Stella? Are you okay? A good girl, Stella. So, with these interactions, it's always Boo that is instigating the, uh, the fights. Like, it's not Stella going after Boo. Stella's just kind of watching him. It's Boo going after Stella, and I hope he didn't hurt her. Did you see how, like, she did not want me to pet her? You okay, Stella? Well, at least with the white fur, like if she was bleeding, it's easier to see it than like a cat with black fur. But, you know, these cats aren't happy because they were living very peacefully in the house. And then, you know, here comes Boo, and he's the one always being the aggressor and starting the fight, so. 9.30 p.m. Downstairs playing with Stella with a scratch and roll. But she just jumped away. I don't know why. And here's Simba. Neither of them are very happy right now. They're kind of shell-shocked over, like, what happened with Boo tonight. Which is not right. You know. Boo needs to learn not to jump on other cats. And not to start fights with them. He needs to learn that. Just like he learned everything else. Right, Simba? Right, Simba? And Splash has been the smart one all evening. And he's just here laying on the ottoman. Staying out of everything. It is 9.40 p.m. And this is the new harness that I bought for Boo. And look at this. Somehow... I've been able to put it on him. And it was really easy to put it on him. Like I was just talking to him and petting him and next thing you know, he had a harness on him. He's not too happy now. I think with the leash attached, um, that's what he doesn't like. But to me, I think this could be the key to uh, having him interact with the other cats. Because if I could have him on a harness, which has been suggested to me from several people, um, then he's not going to be able to like jump and run after the others. And the others are not going to jump and run and attack Boo. And I think he looks really handsome in red, right, Boo? Boo, you look so handsome in your harness. You love it, don't you? You love your harness? You want to go show the other cats? You want to show the other cats how beautiful you look in your harness? You want to show them how nice you look? Come on. You're rolling around on your leash. Come on. Where's the leash? Where's the leash at? Oh, here it is. Come on. Let's go, boo. Come on. Let's go the... Let's go show the other cats how beautiful you look in red. Come on, you look so pretty in red. Let's go. So here's Boo on his leash, and you missed it because I didn't have the camera on, but he's walking really funny. He's like walking low. And uh, look at this. Look at Splash. There's Splash. And um, if Boo jumps on him, it's a short leash. It's only about four feet, but like, I know Splash, I'm pretty positive Splash is not going to jump on Boo. And I think by Boo having the um, 
harness on, you know, it definitely is making him behave differently. Just the fact that Splash is being like brave enough to like hang out there is pretty amazing. And Boo has never been in a harness before. He's never worn a harness before. He's never even had a, um, come on Boo, come on. He's never even had a collar on. All right, all right, stop, stop. Oh my gosh, I totally just realized that Stella is like sitting in the crate watching everything. Like, and she's really enjoying it too. I wish you could have just seen her face. She's like, what is this? Okay, so Boo has been crawling like all over the uh, sectional and the pillows and everything. And um, now he's back on the rug. I gave him some dry food to eat. And Stella has been sitting in the crate just growling at him and watching him. And there's Splash. Splash has been watching him also. Mm, there's Stella. She's not happy. But she's going to slink away. Notice she's not coming after Boo. Like she's not coming here to jump on Boo. And I think it's good training for a Boo to be in a harness. I mean, it would be great if all of these cats wore collars. I've tried to put collars on them. They have beastie bands, which are Velcro collars. And, um... It's really hard to get the collars on these cats and when they do they just kind of go crazy trying to get the collars off um, so to see Boo um, in this harness for the first time I mean it's pretty pretty good for a cat that's never worn a harness or a collar at all I mean that I think it's great I wish all the cats would wear collars and or harnesses so good job Boo and I think it's just good training overall. It's good training for Boo to wear a harness. It's good training for Boo not to jump on the other cats. Uh, it's good training for the other cats to be around Boo. Um, just overall in general, um, I think this could be a very positive experience. I don't want to jinx anything by, um, you know, saying it's already been positive because, you know, who knows what else could happen. But so far, so good. I'm very proud of Boo right now. 10.20 p.m. And a little while ago, Boo climbed up into this cat tower near the front window and decided he wants to take a nap. Right, Boo? Right? You want to take a nap? He has been taking a nap. And I've been sitting here talking on the phone. And uh, it's been very peaceful. And all the other cats went downstairs because... They don't want to deal with Boo. So I just took Boo downstairs in his harness. And um, I walked very slowly down the steps. And I stopped a few times as I was walking down. Then I brought him down the steps and I put him on the ground. And like the minute I put him down, he just started running back up the steps. Like he was kind of not wanting to be down there. So I came back up with him. He's in the kitchen now. Simba followed him up, and Simba's just kind of like looking around. Boo was under the dining room table, and I didn't have the camera within reach, so he could not film anything, but he's on this leash, and uh, this other leash is, this is about a six-foot leash. The other one was a four-foot leash, so I swapped it out for the longer leash, and he walks under the dining room table, and I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. He's just going to uh, lay there, but I start hearing growling. And I'm thinking to myself, that's really weird. Like, why am I hearing growling? None of the cats are up here. So I look and I see Boo just laying there and I still hear the growling. And that's when I realized that Stella is laying on one of the dining room chairs. So Stella is laying on a dining room chair growling and Boo is laying underneath the chair in his harness. And Boo, I have to say, behaves exceptionally well in this harness he behaves so good and it's giving all the other cats a chance to look at him and get used to him not being like behind a gate or a barrier and none of them want to jump on boo none of them want to provoke fights with boo they all want to get along with boo boo needs to 
get along with them. So I'm hoping that this harness experiment continues to go as well as it did tonight because Boo has been like really great on it and this is the first time he's ever, ever, ever been in a harness or had a collar around his neck. So uh, Boo, you've been really, really good and I'm very proud of you, okay? Yeah, yeah, good boy, Boo. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, all the cats are up here right now. I mean, Boo could still hang out in his harness with the other cats. I have no problem with that. It's just, right now he's not trained. Like, you know, like when you have a dog on a leash, you could kind of tell the dog where to go. Right now, I really can't tell Boo where to go unless I pick him up and bring him with me. Boo let me clip two of his nails tonight. That's huge progress. <laughs> he let me put the harness on him again. It was like remarkably easy to get this harness on him. For some reason, I think he likes it. I tell him it's his race harness. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Good morning, Boo. Boo was on free roam last night. He slept on the bed for part of the night. He does this thing where he just happens to know where my legs are on the bed and he sleeps between them. It's really weird where he'll sleep on top of my legs. So that's how I know whether he's sleeping on the bed or not. So last night the gates were between the kitchen and the hallway because I felt like it was really cold downstairs and um, when I put the gates here and Stella, Splash, and Simba can hang out in the kitchen if they want. Right now, Simba just ran upstairs. I guess he heard me. And um, I'll put Boo in his room, and then I'll feed the downstairs cats, and then feed Boo. Let's go in your room, Boo. We're going to eat breakfast. Good morning, Stella. Stella and Simba are eating their wheatgrass appetizer. Okay, check this out. I don't know what you can see, but there is a path that is worn through the snow, and I don't know if it's a cat path or just an animal path in general, but do you see that? So it goes like from here diagonally back to behind the fence. So, you know, hunting grounds are back behind the fence, and then there's this path like through the snow to the feeder because that's where the feeder is, see? So um, that's really interesting. The one nice thing about having snow on the ground is that you can see the animal tracks. Whereas without snow, you really can't see their paths and where they like to walk. Like on the side of the house, there's like three cat paths. I don't know if it's just Hydrox who takes those paths all the time or any other cats or animals, but it's really interesting to see where the paths are. There's another path that goes from the patio across the driveway and then like through the bushes on the side of the driveway. Good morning, Splash. Someone was having fun with the toy because they ripped these feathers off. I think this was one of those tinsel mice that at first they weren't interested in but have since played with. Yeah, it is. There's the rest of it. And there's more of it. They must have had a really good time with it. Splash, let me pick him up. I just picked up Splash and uh, it was as surprising to me as it was to him. I was petting him and I said, let me just pet him with like two hands, one on each side. So that's what I did. And then since I was petting him that way, I said, let me just try picking him up and see what happens. And I was able to pick him up, like without him totally freaking out. Now, the minute he turned his head and like saw me, then he kind of like wiggled to get free and I put him down. But just the fact that I was able to like get my arms around him and actually pick him up, that is huge progress. The only time I've ever been able to like pick up Splash or anywhere, get anywhere near picking him up 
was the one I had to take him to the vet to get fixed. Wow, Splash is really doing good. This is their breakfast today. They're getting the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Chicken Bites. And um, I put some of the uh, salmon oil on it. And I'm going to put some water in it. And then um, this is what they're getting. I was spending a few minutes playing with Boo this morning. And um, I have to like double toy him right now. So I have this toy which I play with and then when he grabs it and doesn't want to let go then I take out this toy and like when he sits on this and grabs it and won't let me have it then I take out this toy and um, I just try to like kind of get him worked up and tired out and then I'll give him his breakfast he'll eat it he'll be happy and he'll hang out in his room because again he was on free roam all night he spent some of the night in the living room or wandering the house and Part of the night sleeping on the bed. It is 12 10 p.m. and it is 38 degrees out. That makes me so ridiculously happy. I just came outside to give Hijack some food. Look how happy he is. He's laying next to the shelter in his apartment. Hopefully that rug is dry. It does have a very thick rubber bottom to it so maybe uh, it will block some of the moisture from the melting snow from coming up here is what the cat shelter looks like you can see that a lot of the snow is starting to melt off of like that sunroom area and everything and um where hijax is hanging out right now is really one of the only places that he can hang out that there's not snow so it's good that I have that there these are the tracks that are in the snow so you can clearly see the path leading to that back fence and the hunting grounds back there you could also see where it looks like someone was having some fun jumping around in the snow just give Hydrax a full can of food I gave him some water he's not meowing at me or anything so he seems like he's pretty content. Maybe he had some dry food earlier. It is a little bit after 7 p.m. And it is about 27 degrees out, 28 degrees out. A lot of the snow melted today, which is a good thing. But there is like a lot of wetness here and it is now back to being below freezing so like hopefully everything will not freeze over again i thought it was not going to get above freezing for like another two or three days so i was pleasantly surprised with today's higher temperatures i just gave hydrox one full can of the instinct pride champs chicken formula cat food i gave him some fresh water i don't see him right now i don't know where he is but um, he might just come out and eat it once i go inside I just came inside. It is actually 7.21 p.m. And I was hearing like weird noises when I was outside. I don't know what it was. Um, it's noises I haven't heard before. I don't know if it was something caused by like the melting snow um, or what. But um, I'm going to figure out what it was. And yeah, look, that leg is crooked on the table. So... Um, that one table, if it survives this winter, I'll be happy. Hello, Boo. How are you? So today, Boo was in his room and the cats were on free roam. Because last night, Boo was on free roam and the cats were downstairs. Right, Boo? So right now, cats uh, were just fed dinner downstairs and they are downstairs with the door shut and Boo will be on free roam for a little while and then hopefully in a little while later this evening we will have some more integration procedures and hopefully some more harness training. Okay right now it is about 9.45 and look at Boo. Check him out. Look. He let me put the harness on him again. It was like remarkably easy to get this harness on him. For some reason, I think he likes it. 
I tell him it's his race harness. I say, okay, boo, we're going to put your harness on. It's your race harness. I think he kind of thinks maybe it's like a uniform. You're very stylish, boo. You look very chic. Right? What a stylish boy. Boo, that looks so beautiful on you. You really look good in red. Right? You look so nice in red. You're a handsome boy. Right? You like that. That's like your uniform, right? Because you like to play sports. That's your sports uniform. Yeah. That's your racing harness. Because you're fast, right, boo? You're fast. And you're strong. And you're a high jumper. Right? You like to play track and field? So basically what I want to do is I just want to put the harness on Boo right now and just let him walk around or just hang out with the harness on for a little while. And then, and then I'll decide whether I'm going to put him on the leash again and then kind of interact with other cats or let the other cats up. Um, I'm still cleaning up Christmas stuff, so, um, you know, it'll just depend on whether I want to relax or whether I want to uh, proceed with integrations tonight. I'm in no rush to integrate these cats. Like, the same way I was in no rush when Boo was outside, I feel like it needs to happen on its own time, on the cat's own time also. And although when the gates are up, um, the cats give very good indication that they could do well together, the minute the gates are down and Boo is on his own with the other cats, he just jumps on him. And um, that's not good. So I don't think Boo is ready for that yet. I think he still needs some more time. And um, the other cats tolerate him fine. I have, I've seen absolutely no indication that any of the other cats would attack Boo. Even Stella uh, tolerates him. Like she would just stand there and glare at him. Like I don't see her ever attacking him. Like she might hiss at him, maybe raise a paw to him, but she's not gonna really um, start a bad fight with him or anything. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, I don't think he understands how to interact with the other cats. I don't know what happened over the course of the past year um, when he was outside uh, without them. But even when he was outside with them, he used to jump on Splash. I know that because not only did Sonia confirm what I had known, you know, I remember hearing Splash screaming and then I would see him come running across the patio and Boo would come running after him. So, um, I don't know, maybe Boo has always had that in him. That was his way to play, but maybe he's overexcited. That could be it, too. Maybe he's overexcited with the other cats. We just have to see how it plays out. And I'm not going to force situations that uh, feel forced. Boo's been in his harness for, I don't know, five, ten minutes now. And um, I gave him some of the freeze-dried raw. See, like... He was fine. He walks a little weird with it on. Like he um he almost like uh like walks lower to the ground. But he just needs to get used to it. You know. Honestly, I think it would be good if all the cats were harness trained because I just think for their own safety um it's good in case you need to transport them and there's an issue with a carrier or something. You know, it's good to be able to put them on a harness and a leash for whatever reason. And it would be good if they wore collars also, but maybe Boo would be the first one to wear a collar because he seems pretty okay with this harness. I mean, he's been shaking it and uh, he tugged at it a little bit now, but yeah, do you see how he's, 
I don't know if you guys could see. So like when he walks in this harness, he kind of crouches. He crouches while he walks. See? <laughs> Boo, you're a silly boy. And then sometimes he stands up straight. And then sometimes he crouches. Okay, Boo, you want some more? I don't have it on tight at all. Like, there's plenty, plenty of give and plenty of clearance. Not too much. Like, it's not too much that it's dangerous or anything. But, okay, Boo, ready? I'll give you a few more. Boo's laying in his cat tree, in his collar. Hey, Boo. How are you, boo? Hmm? Being a good boy? Okay, boo. Come on. Come on. You want to see the other cats? Come on. Let's go take a look at the other cats. You want to go downstairs? We could go downstairs. We put the leash on and we go downstairs, right? Right? Come on. Let's let's hang out, Boo. Come on. Let's hang out with Stella. Okay. It is like 10.47 p.m. And Boo's here in the living room. I have him on the leash. And I just opened the door to the downstairs. So when I opened the door, all three of the cats were like near the staircase. So maybe they're up here. I don't know. And um, Boo's in his harness, so he can't jump on them. And he's getting used to it. Right, Boop. Okay, so here's what happened. I was just in the living room with Boo on the leash, and Splash came upstairs, and Splash was in Boo's room. And then Splash walked into the living room, and Boo was sitting behind the collapsible crate. He wasn't in the crate, but he was kind of like behind the crate. So when Splash walked in the room, he really couldn't see Boo. But because Boo was on the leash and harness, the next thing I knew, there's Splash like literally like two inches in front of Boo and they were basically like practically like smelling each other's noses. And then, uh, Boo went to pounce, and um, he was on the leash and the harness, so he really didn't get very far, and then that kind of uh, freaked him out because it was a brand new sensation. Uh, so then he got scared, and then he um, ran back here into his room. So this is an interesting experiment. Okay, so me and Boo are sitting here watching Lucky Feral videos on my phone, and there are two boys in the doorway looking at Boo. They're very curious about him. And it's kind of sad to think that if Boo was not on the harness and leash right now, he'd probably go jump on them. Now I hope Simba does not walk over to Boo. Simba's very curious and there goes Boo. Boo's not feeling very confident with the harness on. I don't want Simba walking under that day bed while Boo's there. I just think they still need to keep a bit of a distance, but at least Boo's not jumping on them. Okay, I just took Boo's harness off, and uh, he seems to be happy about that. And don't forget, this was only the second day ever that Boo has worn a harness or a collar or anything. So he was really good. He was a very, very good boy. And now he's getting brushed. He got some treats. And now he's getting brushed. All right, boo. So tonight the other cats are on free roam. So that means uh, that boo will be in his room. Okay. Boop. 
Boo, are you a happy boy? Boo, are you a happy boy? You happy? What is that? Want a Christmas tree needle? Look how shiny Boo is. Okay, Boo, you could finish. I just gave the downstairs cat some of the Nature's Variety uh, freeze-dried mixers. Here's Stella. She was upstairs. I'm assuming she was sleeping on the dining room chair because anytime she hears me come downstairs, she has to come running downstairs also because she thinks I'm going to give them food or treats. Stella, right, Stella? Right. <laughs> Stella just like inhaled that, right, Stella? My fingers are not me. Oh, Stella, my fingers are not meaty sticks. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. 8.45 a.m. Good morning, Simba. How are you today? Good morning, Stella. There's Splash by Boo's door. Hello, Boo. Good morning, Boo. How are you? You know, out of all of the cats, Boo's the most spoiled. He is the most spoiled cat out of all of them because he has the most one-in-one -one quality time with me. He also has his own room. None of the other cats have their own space. And because he gets more one-on-one -on -one quality time with me, he gets more play time than the other cats get. So I could imagine how that could go to Boo's head where Boo could think he's my favorite and uh, he's the most important cat. Because the reality of it is that all of the cats are my favorite. They're all equally favorited and they're all equally the most important. Right, Boo? You are all equally the most important cats. Boo is also the only cat that gets an entire cat tree to himself and two big windows all to himself. All of the other cats have to share the windows. We also mustn't forget that Boo has his very own poopy box all to himself while all the other cats have to share. Boo even has his very own bottle of Evian spring water for when I make his food. Boo is having what all the other cats had for breakfast today, which is the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Chicken Bites with some of the wild Alaskan salmon oil and some water. And Boo is also getting his herbs. Boo's getting a little bit of playtime right now. He's just been jumping back and forth and running around like a madman. I think he's sitting down right now to catch his breath. He's never played with this toy before.
you guys see the amount of enthusiasm that Boo has for like jumping and playing. Imagine that amount of enthusiasm on top of another cat. That's why the other cats don't like it when Boo jumps on them. Because it's not like he's a delicate jumper. Wow! Imagine having that land on your back. Come on, ready? I just opened up this can of food for Hydrox. This is a can of the Grammy's chicken pot pie that none of the inside cats like, so I'm going to give it to Hydrox. And um, Boo has been meowing because I guess he smells it and uh, he wants me to give him some, so I'm putting a little bit on this spoon and I'm going to make a deal with him. Boo? Boo, I'll let you have some canned food, but you have to promise not to jump on any cats. Do we have a deal? Since you're eating this food, I'm assuming you're accepting the deal? Okay, Boo. We have a deal, right? I'll give you a little bit of the canned cat food for Hydrox when I open it, and you don't jump on cats, right? You keep your feet on the ground. Right? That's it. That's it, Boo. You have your breakfast. I'm about to head outside and give Hydrox's food, and look what I just saw. That entire gingerbread rug that they eat their food on has somehow been moved. How did they do that? But the platter is still on it. Like, the platter has not been flipped over. It's kind of weird. There's Hydrox. He's drinking water. I wonder if he hears me. I'll go out anyway. Hey, Hydrox. Right now, it says it is 34 degrees out. It is so bizarre that I look at a thermometer that says 34 degrees and I think that's warm where I should be looking at that and thinking that's freezing. The thermometer on the side of Hydrox's cat shelter says it's 60 degrees in there. So maybe that black rug, see the black rug? Maybe that's definitely helping uh, to retain heat and uh, make the temperature rise. What I would like to do is go get some stones or bricks and put those in there also because they will retain heat. Uh, longer. So this is what the food bowls look like today. Somehow this food bowl has been removed from this kitty cafe. So that makes me think maybe like a raccoon was uh, getting into it. I just came downstairs to fix the uh, feeding mat. And look what I see. Yesterday I put both of those cat beds on the couch just because I thought they'd like it better up there because usually they lay on the couch. And look what they're doing. They're laying in them. So the question is, where's Simba? There he is. He's laying on the cat tower. Hello, Simba. So Stella, Boo, and Simba have all been letting me clip their nails. Like, I can't do all of their nails at once. But when they're, like, sleeping or relaxing like this, I could kind of sneak up on them and maybe clip like, you know, three or four nails. And so that's what I've been doing over the past few days. And I'd like to finish Stella, but I know if I go over to her, then Splash is going to move and Splash looks really comfortable right now. So I am not going to do that. And it's really funny that they like these beds because they have had similar beds to this in the past and they've never ever ever used them but they really love these beds hello simba i haven't forgotten about you you're a pretty boy simba there's hydrox eating his food
Here's Boo. Boo has been on free roam all day. Right, Boo? And uh, I put his food in his room. He's getting his typical dinner. The primal raw turkey nugget and the nature's variety instinct raw chicken bites. He's getting his herbs. He's getting some water. And uh, he needs to go in his room because I need to take the gates down and feed the other cats and feed Hydrox. And I need to go out for a little bit, so. It is about 7 p.m. and it is about 28 degrees. I just gave Hydrox a full can of cat food. He got the um, Perfect Beast Road Turducken, the last can of that. He also got some fresh water. And the, the thermometer on the side of the cat shelter is indicating about 36 degrees in there. Boo is back in his room right now and I have moved the gates from the downstairs door to Boo's door. And what I've done today is I've actually changed the order of the gates and it's much better this way because if I need to go through whatever door the gates are in, I only need to take down one gate and I can easily pass through. So I've moved one of the smaller 24 inch gates to the bottom and I've put the bigger, I think it's like a 30 inch gate in the middle and then um, the small gate is still on top. So what this means is like when I had this um, between the upstairs and downstairs today, which is where it was for most of the day, um, I had it like this and every time I needed to go downstairs for something all I needed to do was remove the middle gate the bottom gate could stay there the top gate could stay there if I remove the middle gate the bottom gate is low enough that I could easily step over it and the top gate um, is high enough that I could easily duck under it so um, it's just super more convenient that way and I'm like well why didn't I do that sooner so I have this on Boo's door and um, this is where it's going to stay right now because um, I need to get something done right now and then I have to go back out. And if I get home and I have enough time, then what I can do is uh, spend some time uh, integrating the cats. Here's Simba. And Stella's down there eating her food. Splash just uh, ran over to the play rug. Simba, are you going to fall? It is 11.53 p.m. And uh, I'm spending some time with the downstairs cats. They are getting mini sticks. I didn't really have a whole lot of time to spend with them today. It was a very busy day. Very, very busy. So right now, Stella just like inhaled that, right Stella? My fingers are not me. Oh, Stella! My fingers are not meaty sticks. They're not meaty sticks. <laughs> That's the first time she ever did that. Okay, Simba, would you like a meaty stick? Okay, now Simba gets his meaty stick. These are tuna flavored meaty sticks. There you go. They eat them so fast. No more. It's time for Splash's meaty stick. Come on, Splash. Okay, Splash, I will do this over here. Okay, come on. Eat your meaty stick. Here.
eater. Wow, did you see him eat that last piece? He barely even chewed it. Good boy, Splashy. Good boy. Stella's going crazy. I have this toy under the rug. Oh my gosh, they're going nuts over it. It's just a wand toy under this like green rug. Of course, Simba took over. Stella was playing with it, and then Simba has to go push her out. What place do you want to play? There we go. Ready? Ready? Simba's the hunter. He's the warrior. Oh, so is Stella. I just gave them about a tablespoon and a half of crunchies in the digger. These are the Nature's Variety Original Formula Crunchies. And every time I give these to them, for some reason, I feel like I'm giving them like chocolate. And I know that the crunchies are like the same color as chocolate, but it's just something about the way they smell also. It's just, it's weird. I always feel like, that's why they go crazy over it because it's almost like a chocolate for cats but th there's obviously no chocolate in it but it's kind of like the equivalent it's about midnight and it is time for boo to get his meaty stick want a meaty stick boo okay so i am opening this meaty stick package and boo is getting very enthusiastic and um Maybe that like explains a lot of his behavior with the other cats. Like Boo gets really excited about things and very enthusiastic and maybe he just needs to calm that down with them. Maybe he's really excited to see them so that's why he jumps on them. Okay, so here's my camera. Here's the meaty stick. I'm kind of keeping it in the package. Do you see that? Will he eat it out of the hand? Yeah, there's your stick. Oh, look at that. Boo! Slow down. Eat slow. 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 